I'm on. And I don't know who's who's on, but I'm live, and I'm so thankful. We've got like two minutes before time to start, so let me know anybody comes on, and we'll just chat here for a minute. I'm so excited. I think the I think the I think the lighting is okay. I've changed positions in here. Yes, here comes someone. I see somebody. I believe it's Linda Jackson. We're on. Thank you, Lord. And I, I'm sitting right by this booster. I've changed Dawn. Hi, honey. I'm so glad. I changed Beth Ann, Lynn. Hi, sweetie. I've got three boosters in the house from the from the modem back there all the way over here. There's one sitting right behind this chair. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Linda. Hi, Dawn. Oh, my, I'm so excited. I'm Patsy Shannon. Hi, honey. Praying for you, sweetie. We're, in fact, I hope to get on the phone with Linda this week we'll, and just lift you, just pray for you. I'm so happy you're on. I'm, I'm going to wait till 8.30. I don't think it's quite 8.30 yet. Let me go get my clock. You stay right here. I'm going to go get my clock because I'll, don't leave. get a clock so I can kind of keep up with our time. I'm back and I'm going to put my earphones in. Y'all tell me if you can hear me. Hi Cynthia and Debbie Crow. I'm going to put pay, I'm going to put my earphones in. Tell me if you can hear me. Let me know if you can hear me better. Okay, Dawn, we pray for you right now. I've got, do you know that I've got tooth, the Lord gave me about somebody's tooth being healed. So we just claim your tooth is being healed right now, Dawn. And then you go to the dentist and see what's wrong. But actually that's on that little list he gave me a while ago was someone's tooth was being healed. So we bind that pain out of your mouth right now, Dawn, and we command you to be healed in Jesus' name. Joyce, can y'all hear me? Can anybody tell me if you hear me? In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Lisa, Debbie Crow, hi, sweetie, Lisa Lewis Crow, Patsy. Oh, you're hearing fine, good. So we're going to get ready to get started here just in a second. Alina, hi, sweetie. I'm so happy. It makes me happy to see my friends. We're, we, we've, we've missed, I've missed that. Linda, hi. It's perfect. Everything's good. Beth Ann, thank y'all for telling me you can hear me. Cynthia, good. I've, I put my ear plugs in. And um, I, we're good to go. And the devil cannot touch this phone tonight in Jesus' name. Hi, Deborah Huggins. I hear you listening. You and your husband are going to sleep every night listening to some of, our, some of my old videos. That's so sweet. My daughter just told me you told her that. So that's so sweet. I pray they're blessing you and you're sleeping well after listening to them. Woody, hi. Oh, Woody had surgery on two teeth yesterday. Well, the Lord gave me a, a tooth while ago to pray for, that it was healing somebody with a tooth problems. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Don, Deborah, we do. Yes, you do listen to the videos. That was so sweet. She said, Mom, she told me to tell you. So that makes me feel good. That I know that there are a lot of people watching these videos. And, of course, they're on YouTube. And I don't know, you know, where all they're going. Deborah Pickering, hi, honey. Praying for all your children everywhere and for you too. Um, I was trying to think. Uh, we've had a good week, and I put three boosters in the house and a new modem. Margaret, hi, Margaret and Will from Colorado. Oh, thank you, Lord, you're on here, and, and it's going to be good tonight. Uh, it's it's going to be good. I'm going to start it tonight and probably finish it next week because it's, it's very intense, but it's such a good teaching. And as we get into it, you'll understand it. It's all about the mighty, powerful, glorious blood covenant we're under, that we are under and in because of Jesus. And it started in Genesis. So it's exciting. I'm excited to get to teach this again. Um, we have 10 countries now t tuning in. And, and some countries have like three or four pastors, but most of them is one or two people. And, and uh, for um, David told me his friend in England's watching every 
every, so that's another one, every Sunday night. So that's good too. Deborah, please pray for my veins and my legs to be restored. So, Father, tonight we command the, your vascular system to be healed. Every artery and vein, and I ask God to go in there and clean them out, make them soft and flexible. Anybody with vein problems, just artery problems, claim it right now. There's an anointing for miracles tonight. There is an anointing for miracles. People are being healed. I mean, literally, we're getting testimonies of people being healed and delivered and things happening, like things are changing in their homes. So thank you, Lord, that your, your veins, everything, we, right now, in the name of Jesus, we, we bind every spirit of infirmity. Gina, hi, honey. Every spirit of infir infirmity, in the name of Jesus, we're breaking off of everybody that listens to this video at any time that the healing power of God Almighty falls on them and the healing power goes through you and heals and corrects. It's ours. It belongs to us. It belongs to us because of the blood covenant and the thyroid and blood pressure and everything. With anything, y'all just start claiming it yourself because I'm, my husband already claimed that yeah, there's going to be miracles with healing stuff. Jennifer Rose, hi, honey. I'm glad you're on. We're getting ready to get started here. I'm, I'm asking the Holy Spirit now to go into every home that's, on, that's coming on, that's on and coming on, that not one home, that the presence of Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit is, fa is falling and in, in, in circulating in your home and around you and in you and anybody in your home. If there's any unbelievers, we ask God Almighty that the Spirit of God falls on them tonight and brings them into the kingdom in Jesus' name. And anyone needing healing, we're asking for miraculous, supernatural Creative miracles, all uh, anywhere we need creative miracles, we're asking for them too in Jesus' name. Pancreatic cancer, we yes, we, that's on the prayer list. We command that pancreatic cancer to go in Jesus' name. We command cancer to come out of everybody, anybody. Thank you, Jennifer. Welcome to the Holy Spirit. Yes, that's where the power is through the blood. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So I wanted to welcome y'all and, and invite the Holy Spirit in the presence of Jesus that you feel the stirring inside of your spirit, inside of you, like in your belly where the spirit is, that you feel that he draws you. I had a young, young man tell me, he says, I listen to you and your words kind of pull me. He says, they just pull me. They just, I, and he, he didn't understand it. He said, yeah, I feel it. I can just feel it. So the Lord's on these words and it's not me. Anything you get, you just start raising your hands and thanking Jesus. It's all because of him. So I told you we have 10 countries now with people, some pastors watching. Um, so tonight I pray that all of us drink fresh rivers of the glory from heaven. Tonight, every one of us, that we drink in fresh glory from heaven, fresh into every life tonight. In the name of in that vestibular neuritis, we command to break up and go permanently in the name of Jesus now by the power of Almighty God, Holy Spirit, go and heal, heal this lady, precious lady now in Jesus' name, all of them, all everybody's on there. God, I'm asking you to do the miraculous, even while we're speaking that they're receiving miracles in Jesus' name. So, Lord, we thank you for these rivers. We thank you for the rivers of the Holy Spirit flowing out of us. We thank you that inside of us is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That we're being filled with the fire, the power, the zeal, the anointing of, of restoration to the body of Christ and bringing souls into the kingdom in Jesus' name. So we pray for, I sent tonight prayers this week for our elected officials doing warfare over the curses that have been sent to them. And as yesterday, a Baptist minister is right on Facebook uh, and I uh, said, proclaimed that Trump was going to die, Pence was going to die, and his son was going to be president, be the Antichrist. Well, I sent a prayer, I sent a prayer, rebuke. And, and, broke, and broke the curses he put on, the, on our elected officials. He was speaking, it was some Baptist church in Tennessee, the name he's in there, name and everything. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Well, anyway, there's a warfare prayer that's been sent to him, and I just put it on my prayer team to, because I did it yesterday as soon as I read it, but it was back on here again tonight circling on Facebook. And you, you break any time anybody says death, that is up from the pits of hell. The Lord knows our time. No one can tell. That just is just evil, pure evil. 
no matter if you love somebody, hate somebody, you certainly don't wish death on them in Jesus' name. You pray for them. It, okay, so <laughs> I've already said this prayer, and y'all have all agreed on this prayer that I prayed for the for the president and all the elected officials up there that were having curses sent on them. And I sent it also to Fox News. I sent that prayer to Fox News, so thank you, Lord. So I'm praying tonight that we all comprehend and that we're filled with wisdom, knowledge, counsel, and understanding from God Almighty, that the Spirit of God fills all of us right now with that, that He captivates us into His truth and into His Word, that it becomes life to every one of us, life that transforms us in, in a, out of our mindsets so messed up so that we have the mindset and the mind of Christ in every area in Jesus' name. And that all heavenly blessings in Christ Jesus are, being, are filling all of us now in Jesus' name. And that he, he uh, <coughs> enlightens us, illuminates us, renews us, restores us, revives us, transforms our minds, fills us full of truth and holiness and righteousness with, with him. And that we, we, go, we leave here tonight fit knowing that the Lord Jesus Christ has touched us in new ways in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And, the, and there are unbelievers that watch this. There are unbelievers that watch. There are people watching this you would not believe that I know it by all over the nation. So we just thank God for everybody. Unbelievers, I thank you that tonight that Jesus Christ is going to save you, fill you with his precious love. That's what everybody's looking for is somebody that they know really loves them. I pray tonight that we're intoxicated with his love and with his spirit and with, with his righteousness. We're just intoxicated with who he is and what he did for each one of us individually. And we're praying for your grandees. And I'm asking Linda Jackson to write these prayer requests down so I can get them on the, team, on the thing tomorrow. We relinquish our right. We re relinquish all of our rights to know him. Wherever we need to give up our rights to know him tonight, Lord, give it, make us willing to give it up so we can really know you. We want to know you, Lord. Our whole hunger inside of us is to know you, Lord Jesus, personally, and that we walk with you and that we, that you, we are personally involved, you are personally involved with us and that we feel you and hear you and know you and the word of God speaks to us truth and life. And we, and we just thank you, God. Oh, my. Come in. There's, there's, there's things come up top. says many are commenting on your, I, I guess, somewhere else. So other people are watching. So tonight, Lord, I thank you for all of this. So we offer ourselves up as living sacrifices. Holy, acceptable, Lord, that you use us wherever we are, wherever we work, wherever we're at home, whatever church, wherever we go, that you use us in the unique way that you made us. Each one of us have a different call, a different ministry, and we, but it takes us all to make this thing work. And we are the body of Christ in every joint, even to the smallest little toe, is critically important to balance out the body. So, God, we thank you that, that you placed us where you want us and that we're faithful there. And so tonight we're going to be looking at the blood of the covenant. But I wanted to just mention this before we go any further. For people that will be listening to this later on, you can get a hold of the Master's Touch Ministries through MTM, Linda at AOL.com, it's L-I-N-D-A. And you can go to Master's Touch uh, Ministry org Ministries.org. Or you can go to Master's Touch Ministry Group, which is what we're on tonight. And then I have a page on Facebook. It's just called Linda Blankship Page. You can message me like a lot of people have been doing uh, with prayer and with the miracles and everything. A lot of people are messaging me, which is really good. And I pray I don't miss people because I get a lot of, of videos from all over. I, I can't even begin to keep up with them. But I thank God that people are thinking about me. But... They get mixed in with all the messages. So I pray, if you don't hear back from me, you, you give me another shot at it because I don't mean to miss anyone in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for blessing, blessing our police force, all of our policemen. God, we thank you for your divine Holy Ghost protection on our policemen, on the laws of our land, on the Constitution, on the elected officials, on this election coming up, that there will not be chaos in America, that there will be p peace, and that, uh, that the righteousness will reign in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. 
So tonight we're going to be talking about the, the incredible plan of God when he, when he in the very beginning Genesis came in with a covenant and every covenant of God. Hi, Randy. Thank you in here from New York City. Good. Praise the Lord. Every covenant God ever made, it, it had to have blood. God demanded blood because he's a holy God. So he made, he made covenants all the way through. But it always dealt, and no sin was ever forgiven without an innocent, some perfect innocent blood sacrifice. So that's where we're go, that's where we're going to start tonight. But the blood of the Lamb. I wanted to go to Revelation twelve eleven first because this has been very personal to me. This scripture that we overcome Satan, we overcome Satan by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. For we do not love our life unto death. That is the most powerful scripture you can ever put in your memory bank that we overcome Satan with the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and that you don't love your life unto death that means you what you're willing to you give up everything hi Frank yes we're speaking life to all those around and the Holy Spirit's falling on everybody so that scripture is a Reve it's Revelation 12 11 write it down tell your friends about it it works I've seen thousands of people delivered from every kind of demon demonic spirit by just knowing to say the blood of Jesus long before I knew, knew to quote the scripture and bind and all that. I, I, I learned that way back from uh, during the charismatic movement when they would come once a month and speak at the full gospel business events. That's where I found about being baptized in the spirit. And they would have uh, Bradison, I believe his name was Harold Bradison, one night and he spoke about deliverance and Bob Mumford and some of them got messed up but they repented and got straightened out, out years later and then years later and they served the Lord with all their hearts. Uh, Derek Prince was uh, uh, one of the speakers that came and so we had meetings in our home. We were young with four young children but my husband and I would have meetings and these speakers then would come to our house and speak and one of them came and I don't know if it was Derek Prince or Bob Mumford, I, I don't remember and prayed for us, and they wanted to teach us about deliverance because we never, you know, we were out of the Southern Baptist Church, and we'd just been excommunicated from them, and we didn't even understand what it was all about, but we just knew the Bible said it, it was true. So uh, they came in, so we sat in the chair, and they wanted to kind of teach us so we could pray for each other. And when it was my turn, I sat in the chair, and, and he laid his hand on my head, and when he did, I saw the word and heard it at the same time, fear of the future. I had no idea that was in me, but I knew what I, as soon as it came up, I knew exactly what it was. And it went across the front of my head like a ticker tape in white, fear of the future. And I heard the spirit speak it. And so I said, fear of the future. And he said, did you? I said, I heard it and I saw it. So he broke it. And what that was when I was born again, two years before this, I was born again when I was 25. I was baptized in the Holy Spirit at 27, but I was filled with the Spirit when I found Jesus. I mean, glory filled all over. So this, so now I'm finding I've got things in me that, and that I didn't know existed because I always thought Satan was just one entity. I mean, always, and this was a shock. So that was beginning my introduction to, to the deliverance ministry. So now everybody's coming, because we had the meetings, they were all coming to our house for deliverance, and we had no idea what we were doing. But we, well, I, heard it, I heard him say the blood. Somebody said the blood. So I knew you said the blood. And then I, this scripture, I found the scripture, and it was, you overcome Satan with the blood. So if you're in a tight place, don't ever forget this and you have no one to join you, you can't even get to anybody, you start saying the blood of Jesus. If you say it long enough, that devil will leave. He hates the blood. The blood defeats and says it right there. But there's two things uh, that I wanted to tell you about. Uh, the Bible has two main facts about overcoming. These things don't even want to stay in my ears tonight. Maybe they're not supposed to. I don't know. He has two, God has two main facts about overcoming Satan's power in our lives after salvation. Mike Simmons, I'm praying you're healed in Jesus' name. And if you're not, you're healed right now during Pastor Mike, that you're healed now while we're, while we're on. So those, the two things, uh, and it goes back to Revelation 12, 11, the two things, I've got to find them. The facts of overcoming Satan 
in our lives after this is all after salvation is the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and what that means is that we overcome satan by the expression by the expression of the test of, of the express expression what you've been of your testimony about the blood of the lamb ex, ex, sharing about the blood of the lamb that's that's critical that you share that your testimony is that you've overcome satan or whatever it is you've overcome by the blood of the lamb that's your testimony and it's powerful and it keeps you free the, because you're not going to be bothered if you put a, say the blood a lot out loud the blood of jesus christ out loud so that's a, that's the two main things about that revelation um 12 is that you you give your testimony expressing verbally about the blood of the lamb this is a key it is a key to your victory this right right there if you don't remember anything else tonight except revelation 12 11 and you always in jesus name it's always in jesus name he paid a huge price for us to have that gift so in hebrews 9 12 jesus um Jesus, when he was crucified and rose from the dead, he took his own blood. Hebrews uh, nine twelve. Jesus took his own blood into the holy of holies, a holy place in heaven. And and but what I wanted to tell you, it had to be accepted because he's now our high, high priest. The high priest in the old covenant was their high priest. Now Jesus has become our high priest after after he shed his blood and died for us. But he took it into heaven and it had to be accepted. Because you know it was accepted because then the Holy Spirit came after that. That was the gift that was coming, knowing that he, he was accepted as, as that. So the blood of the Lamb is so powerful. But when he first rose the day of resurrection, he ran at Mary. And Mary was clean. He said, don't touch me. That, that was in the morning. But in the evening, this is John 10, I believe. In the evening, he says to John, touch me, feel me. So what he did, what happened, had to be because he took his own blood. That morning, he had to take his own blood. I don't know who collected angels, Holy Spirit, or who or he collect. I don't know. He took his own blood into a holy place in heaven. It was presented there. God ex accepted it and put him in the place of the high priest. And then he came back and was with the disciples that night. And he told them to touch him. And he showed Peter, you know, doubt, and he showed him his hands. And, uh, and his feet, the holes, the nail prints and all. It's, a, it's very significant that you understand that his blood is in heaven. And that's why it's so powerful here on earth today. And we just thank Jesus for that. We thank that. His blood activated the new covenant for us. That blood activated the new covenant. It started in Genesis and it goes all the way through Revelation. God always demanded a blood covenant in the old and the new in Exodus 24, he says, Behold the, blood, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you. He was speaking to, to Moses when he said that. Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you. And, and that was when he was sprinkling three million people with the blood of an innocent animal. And also it was when he went into the Holy of Holies, the most holy place in the back. Holy of Holies, and sprinkle, he sprinkled all the utensils out in the holy place and the Holy of Holies, and he put it back there on the uh, Ark of the... It's amazing. It's all amazing. His, this, is a, this was back in Exodus, this happened, that the blood was being applied way back there then. Was being by, applied by man, but God had told him how to do it. Now, here are these healings. I'll call out later. Now we're going to go into the teaching. I, I'm going into the Old Covenant. Next week I'll go into the New Covenant. And, and we'll keep going on the blood. I did this teaching uh, in Ohio. And it was, I guess, two or three, between two and three hundred people in the room that night. And there was, and I want to tell this because this is critical uh, that, that you hear all of this. That you don't think this is boring or anything. There's a lot of life coming out of this teaching. There was a young man in the meeting that I did not really know. I, mean, I really didn't know anything about him, any of this until after it was all over. And um, he came. He he came to the meetings. He came. He came every month. And um, this this 
it was, I don't know if it was at a dinner meeting or when he, he shared this, that he had been, he was brilliant, high up in the military, so secret that his wife didn't even know what he was in. But he was a brilliant man, been very successful. And he, he said, Linda, you, you don't know this, but I've studied every philosopher, I've studied every religion in the world. I spent hours and hours and hours and years searching. I studied the Bible from gen all the way through. He said, and I wound up in Buddhism. That's where I wound up, where I felt like that's what made more sense to me. And he said, when you taught, it was three months in a row I taught this, what I'm trying to cram in here for two, two nights. He said, when you taught on the blood covenant from Genesis to Revelation, I understood it. And he became a Christian. And it was in every meeting. And it's critical that you understand the blood covenant. It starts in Genesis. And Jesus fulfills it in the new covenant. It takes us out of the law and all of that. But that's there to get God our life. But we're not. It covered in the old covenant. It it goes in us in the new covenant and purges everything out of us. Where in the old covenant, it just covered the sin. What a graceful, graceful, mighty gift Jesus gave us. And that we were honored to live in the time under grace. And, and not, but God gave them a way in the old covenant to be, that they were covered. And it was through these blood sacrifices. So the, and it was the high priest that always did it. That's why I started out and read that to you about the high priest. Jesus became the high priest. There's no more needs for high priest after Jesus came. The, uh, he knew the blood uh, brain. Actually, actually, what happened in the old covenant, they would apply the blood on the, on the ear. This, they did different things. Well, in one instance, they applied the blood on the ear, the thumb, and the big toe. And then after the sin, that covered their sins, it covered their hearing, their work, and their walk. And then after the blood was applied, then they applied the anointing oil. And they knew that when you applied the blood uh, in, the, in the tabernacle, the glory came. They knew that. And, and they also knew when they applied the blood on them for covering of sin, that when they went back and applied the oil, which represents the Holy Spirit, the, uh, the glory came, the Spirit came. And that's amazing today. If you, that's why I'm telling you, you say the blood. Do not be disgraced by saying the blood. It's been a tool for me that has literally, and some of you know this, has delivered thousands and thousands of people. His blood, I'll, you, you honor his blood. And you honor him. You honor Jesus. And you honor the Holy Spirit that comes to cover where the blood has been applied. That's like us when we accept Jesus inside. He comes inside, and then the Holy Spirit comes. He, that, he, you can't separate them. And it's the blood that brings Jesus. It's us accepting him and his sacrifice for us, the blood. Y'all tell me if you can hear just as well without these hearing things because they keep popping out. Tell me. If the blood of animals could do this, how much more would the blood of Jesus Christ? Thank you, Linda. Jesus paid with his life. He, for, so that we could know him. And he took our place. He actually, when he shed his blood, it gave us dominion over the dominion of Satan. That blood gives us dominion over the dominion of Satan. It's the secret of this. It's in the blood. Our victory is in the blood. Thank you, Mandy. Thank you, Cindy. They can all hear me good because it kept falling out and I don't know why. If your mind's tormented tonight, you start applying the blood. I, that's from my own personal experience. The blood of Jesus Christ, saying the blood in the name of Jesus has delivered me from, I don't know, can't even tell you what all. But it's been a wonderful walk with the Lord. It's been an amazing walk because what I've learned, I've shared with so many people and they've been set free, totally set free. The bondage, any kind of bondage you in, you're in tonight, it's illegal. It is, if you know Jesus Christ, it is illegal for that devil, that thing to be there. And his name, the name of Jesus Christ and his blood will, will purge that thing out of you. A lot of this stuff happens to us in childhood way before we're old enough to even know about the Lord. So if you're tormented, I'm giving you some secrets tonight. Hebrews um, 21, 14, the power of his blood destroys Satan. I believe it's Hebrews 2, 14. 
you can look it up because I will cover Hebrews next week, next Sunday night, the Lord willing. The blood of the Old Covenant and the New Covenant and the New Testament. It's all about sacrificing of innocent, some something innocent, something innocent, the pure blood from something innocent. These covenants had to have that for them to work. There is no covenant without the blood and it with God Almighty, the creator of everything. The creator of everything. He demands a blood cover a blood sacrifice. He did from the beginning that he put people here on this earth. It's a, and he, uh, he always, he taught from the very beginning how you could cover your sins with an innocent sacrifice. And, it, and it's written in the scripture that uh, they script prophesied all through the old covenant about Jesus. Every bit of this is about Jesus Christ coming. Every bit of it. And, and it was so when he came, the people would recognize him. That's, that's over and over, they, everything they did, Jesus was in it. You could see it. The, um, St. Augustine said this about the Old Covenant and New Covenant. He said the New Covenant is in the Old Covenant contained. The Old Covenant is in the New Covenant explained. And that is the be best way to explain that. So I want to go back about this man that was a Buddhist priest. He was a Buddhist priest that heard this teaching from Genesis to Revelation about, about the blood covenant. After he was born again, he, took, he had a shrine in his home, and he had a lot of, he was over a lot of people. He was a Buddhist priest in that area. He, he put the shrine out on the, he got rid of the shrine. He accepted Jesus and walked away from all of that and the only thing it took, because he had read the Bible when he was searching all those years, was understanding the blood covenant. It's so powerful. When I understood the blood covenant, that this blood, that his blood worked to free me, and his blood cleanses me, oh, what a relief when you understand that. You don't carry guilt and condemnation anymore in the, in the new covenant. You get rid of it. Once you repent, it's gone. The Lord takes care of it as if it never happened. It's a key to understanding the scripture. Okay, in the Old Covenant, they sacrificed the innocent animals. In the New Testament, in the New Testament, it was the Lamb of God that was sacrificed, Jesus Christ himself. The, there's a word in Greek in the Old Covenant, and it's spelled D-E-A-T-H-I-H-E, -I, -E, I believe, and it means to cut a covenant with judgment. This is what it means. It's with judgment on the innocent to provide a covering for the guilty. That's what the word covenant, cut in the covenant means in Greek. It's, it's cut in the covenant is with judgment on the innocent to provide, provide covering for the guilty. And that's what Jesus did. That's what these animals did in the old covenant. But ours is he purges everything out of us where they, it just covered them. So it's the blood that covers. It is the blood Hebrews, oh my goodness, it's his blood. It's his blood that covers. It is for us. You have to understand the blood covenant. Because, I, like I said, it has set many of you on this listen tonight have been set free with me just saying the blood before I knew. And I'll always say the blood. Oh my, I always say the blood. Revelation 12, I'm going I'm to say that again. Go to Revelation 12, 11, write that down and, and, and make it part of your life. It's not a thought. It's not magic. It's warfare. You're asking the Lord to fill you with faith so you can complete your journey and overcome the enemy of your soul. Every day, offer yourself up as a living sacrifice. Every day. We are going with the Word, the blood, Jesus, and for warfare to, get, to set us free and set the body of Christ free and to bring people into the kingdom. So it's not a thought. It's real, live, tangible things that you can get a hold of to work with your life. You're not left out there. Yes, Revelation 12, 11. It's right. Write it down. It's very good. It's very good. If you're going to be in heaven... I'm speaking to everybody, old and new covenant. If you're going to be in heaven, you will be there with a robe washed white by his blood. That's how you'll be there. 
will go there because of the blood. John said, and those around the throne fell at his feet and sang a new song, for he was slain and hath delivered us unto God by his blood. John said that. In Hebrews, there's a lot about the blood, and I'm going to teach on that next week. And I believe, if I remember correctly, there might be 14 ways the blood works for us. And you can go ahead and read Hebrews, and you may understand, because I'm not a teacher. I'm sharing. So you may get more out of it than I can teach you, but I'm going to go on that, and I will hit on the Abrahamic covenant. Abraham, the Abrahamic co covenant, it's huge, and it's, it's a picture of Jesus Christ in us. And I hope to get that next week, too. And Hebrews 9, 19 says, This is the uh, blood of the covenant which God hath enjoined unto you. This is New Testament. That means he's put you in charge of the blood. Enjoined means to put you in charge of. So if you just let it lay there, it's not going to do you any good. But if you use it when you're praying for unlove, uh, for people to be healed, uh, uh, people to be delivered, you better pick up the blood along with the name of Jesus and your warfare and go. So I'm going to start at Genesis 1 now. God said, when he said, God said, this God is, the name, is known as the Elohim God. It's a God that didn't have fellowship. It's one that created the heavens, the earth, the angels, because no angel ever called God Father. It's, it's without fellowship. And that's in Genesis 1. He created man in one twin, in one. That's the beginning of one. And in 2-7 two, in two is where he introduces himself as Elohim, a God of creation. And then over in, over in 2, uh, still in chapter 2, he introduced, after creating man, he do, introduces himself as Lord God Jehovah, which means fellowship covenant. That was introduced back in Genesis 2 as as Jehovah, Lord God, he calls himself Lord God, and it is Jehovah. He, I'm saying to add that to it. It means a covenant God, a fellowship God. He wanted fellowship. He wanted a relationship. The same in the New Testament, but you get it through Jesus Christ. The second chapter introduces himself as a covenant God who is looking for fellowship. Jehovah God wants fellowship with his children. So take time to talk to him daily. He wants fellowship. He went to all of this so he could have, create man was so he could have fellowship. And so then in, we go on down in Genesis and we find uh, about the tree of good and evil with Adam and Eve because they were created in Genesis 3 and 4. And Satan says to Eve, you shall not surely die. Satan was on the scene then because the war had already taken in heaven and they had already kicked one third were cast out of those angels with Satan. And so he says to Eve, you will, you will be like God and know God. See, only Satan could say that because he did know God. And he knew what God was like. And you'll know good and evil. And she says, Eve, and it says, Eve saw the fruit that it was good to, to the eye. And it was desired to make, her, make them wise, to make one wise. That's what she saw after God had told them not to touch that tree. They could have everything but not that. And so as soon as they ate, they lost their fellowship with the Lord. See, Christianity is the only religion that requires death to find life. Here, so she, found, she thought she was getting life and they found death. Now all of a sudden they know they're naked, they're ashamed, they're embarrassed. And God comes to Eve. Somewhere, somewhere down here, God comes to Eve, uh, to Adam, and says, where are you? Because they were hiding from him, always been free to walk naked and no shame or anything. Now they're hiding. That's what Satan will do to us in the New Testament. He gets you, it looks good, it might make you look wise, and maybe, and then he's got you once you fall for it, and then you've got to go back. The Lord will immediately forgive you, but it, it will, if you don't repent immediately, then you're going to have to go back later on. And in the meantime, the devil will work you over good. So just remember, when he comes to entice you, once you taste of it, it becomes bitter to you. It really will. If you know in your spirit it was wrong. 
And a lot of people in addictions, and see, and Jesus is very patient and kind, and, and he doesn't condemn. He is all about deliverance. The church has got to wake up to the deliverance. And st as soon as someone's born again, they should go through a ministry of deliverance and then get baptized in the Spirit. So if they don't, they're going to struggle. And it may take a year to get them free. Well, if it takes a year, that's fine. They're getting free. They're free every time they get deliverance. If they need deliverance, and the Word is getting in them, which is setting them free. So they know what God is expecting. We've got to have that. So anyway, Adam... So he, so he was hiding. He had lost consciousness of God and had gained consciousness of self. That's what happened when they sinned. They lost consciousness of God because it was all about them and God walking through the garden. And then now it's a consciousness about him and who he is. And, and he was hiding. He was said, I was afraid. Even fear had hit him. Well, they had never known fear. But God is a good God. He's not through with mankind because he loves his creation. And we, we it's a vain thing to try to cover up your nakedness. And they tried to cover it up with fig leaves, and of course that didn't work. God didn't accept it because his work. That was work of the hands. He never accepts the work of the hands for a, a, a covenant relationship. It's all about his blood. In Old Covenant, it was the blood of innocent animals. And so God, there was five curses pronounced on them right then, but I've got to tell you this because it it's really shows God's love in the end. He pronounced a serpent uh, 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 would be crawling on your belly and all that, the cattle and all that. And then he said, I'll put enmity between you and the, and the woman and between your seed and her seed, and I'll multiply pain in childbirth your husband will rule over you and your desire will be towards him and you the curse the ground is cursed and you'll be laboring and the sweat of the brow you shall eat bread you will return to the dust now that was he what he pronounced over them for sinning sinning but this is the second judgment that was all in the first judgment this is where god's love and grace is here for us today just like it was for them so the second judgment was the love, was love. He always comes to us with love. He'll correct you through the word or through someone in the church, you know, helping you understand that something's not quite right. He shows the most amazing truth as a father's love for his children in this second um, judgment. So no sacrifice is too great to bring fellowship back doing God and man that he's created. No sacrifice. It's too great to bring fellowship back between God and man. He created. So here's how he did this. He, he said, her seed shall produce the redeemer. Do you know, out of that, out of Adam and Eve and all of this, it was her seed that was going to finally produce the Redeemer, that whose blood was going to totally be for the whole world. See, the fig leaves didn't work, and what God demanded was he, he sacrificed an innocent animal and took that blood, took the skins of that innocent animal and covered them with the skins. So two innocent, the animal, some animals, one or two were, were killed innocently so they could be covered. So their sin was covered then. That was the first time that had ever happened in this world that we're living in today was that, was that animal, innocent animal's blood that was a covering for their sin. So now he says to Eve, your seed shall produce the, the, the Redeemer. So she was playing a big part in the future, what, what we're in today, her seed. So you came to, even though she sinned, God corrected it. He was born of the seed of a woman. He would crush Satan's head, bruising his lordship. Galatians 3.13 said, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, having been made a curse for us. So out of Eve and Adam, they were the, they were the ones that caused the lineage for our Redeemer, Jesus Christ, our beloved Savior, our Master, the one we adore, 
came out of from Adam and Eve. And so we're going on. And all of this, we see the picture of Jesus. All of this. The old covenant is hidden Jesus everywhere. Genesis 3, 31. God covered Adam and Eve with the coats of skin and the sacrifice of an innocent blood. Life is in the blood. Always remember that. The Bible says the life is in the blood. So when Jesus gave up his life, gave up his blood, he gave up his life. He gave his life to cover us, and he gave, took those innocent animals in to cover Adam and Eve. And we try a lot of things to cover up a lot of things, but in the end, the only thing that's going to cover anything we've done wrong is the precious blood of Jesus. The precious blood of Jesus. Now we're going to Cain and Abel. I'm go I can't go to all of them, just some of the ones in the Old Covenant that where the blood covenant was applied. But this was right after Adam and Eve because these were their children. They offered, uh, let's see, Adam and Eve had two children, Cain and Abel, Abel and Cain. And they were in the garden. They were still in the garden. This is Genesis, Genesis 4, 23. Both offered God sacrifices because he asked for sacrifices to pre, as a gift to be presented to him. And of course, Cain was a tiller of the earth, and so he sacrificed the fruit of his labor. Abel was a keeper of sheep, and he sacrificed the first uh, um, one of his, of his flock. The first one born of his flock is what Abel sacrificed. And so God accepted Abel's sacrifice. They had to know about the blood because they were in the garden, and Adam and Eve, they did because Moses knew about it. They knew about the blood covering, the covenant of the blood. God accepted Abel's and, re and rejected Cain's. This is in Genesis 4, 6, and 7. And he told Cain, if you do what's right, you will not, you, you will, if you, if you do not do what's right, you will not be accepted. Sin lives at your door. Rule over it, he told him. And if you, and if you do what is right, you will, be, you will be accepted. And so the Lord was telling him, you know what's right. I, I demand a blood sacrifice. He, he knew what had happened. And that's, that's how, why Abel knew what to do. The blood was the only thing he would accept. And, and of course, uh, what happened he rebelled and, and did not come and did not deal with that sin because uh, he was offering what labored, what he labored with this animal God had created, and it was the blood. Blood, life is in the blood, and he required that. It's nothing but the blood of Jesus, Amos said, and I, I agree with that. God would never accept anything to do with sin except the blood, an innocent blood. So 410, he rejects God's way and kills his brother Abel and, re, and rejected the blood sacrifice. This is a picture of the flesh and the spirit. This was a picture of two, two brothers, two sons. One wanted to live in the spirit and one in the flesh. And this is a picture of this. And we will always fight that too. You, this is a picture of us that we can always make the right or wrong choices. Sometimes innocently we get messed up, but I'm talking about where we make it willingly. Uh, the spirit and the flesh will war until we can put that part under, get rid of it. We'll always, there's always something popping up and you have split seconds to choose, to choose what, do what's right or let the flesh win. And we're dealing with the flesh and the spirit in, in this new covenant. There's always been a war between the flesh and the spirit. The man of the flesh are trying to trying to solve it, and it'll never work. It has to be the spirit. You have to walk, you have to deal with your your life in the spirit realm. Adam and Eve's choice, they disobeyed, and it brought judgment. Cain and and Cain had a choice, and he disobeyed, and it brought murder. Abel's blood cries out. The Bible says Abel's blood cries out for vengeance. Jesus Christ's blood cries out for mercy. Thank you, Lord, for your blood. He, he's merciful to us. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews 11, 4, by, by faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. Abel's act of worship by faith 
presented the sacrifice required of God. Jude 11, the, those who do, do, go the way of Cain will come to, to an end forever separated from God because of rebellion. Because of rebellion. Genesis 4.24, Adam and Eve had a third son named Seth. And Seth was the one that brought the lineage of Jesus. Jesus Christ came from that seed, from Seth, their third son. But there was a curse on the family because um, later on, Cain, from Cain was Enoch, and Enoch had a son that murdered La uh, Lamech. So that, that's where the generational curses first started, right there. And we break a lot of generational curses. I break in generational curses off my family from both sides. From both sides. The Lord show, brings them up. He do, it's a progression. He doesn't do it all at one time. You wouldn't make it if you had to go through what I went through. But he does get it out of us. But there are a lot of generational curses that got people messed up today, and you have no idea what's causing this and causing it in your children. And things we do today can, will be, unless we repent and break it, it goes down into our children. And I said, Lord, don't give us rest until we find you, Lord Jesus, and that we don't ever offer up any sacrifice except our body, that we offer our pure lives up to you as a, as a sacrifice, and that it's, it's, that it's it, through the blood, precious blood of Jesus. Now I'm going to Noah. Noah was the first time the covenant was named. It's the first time the covenant was, was named, was with Noah. This is Genesis 6. God said, I will establish my covenant with you. You alone are righteous before me and blameless. You are just man and have a perfect walk with God. So the whole family was saved because he was righteous. So if you've, and I'm going on down here and tell you, if there's one person in the family that is born again, God will save, he will make sure every child comes into the kingdom. That you, it's in the Bible because even if you're married to an un, ungodly man that's not a Christian, he's sanctified because are you, are you not a Christian and he's a Christian, he is a Christian, you're sanctified because of him. So it's a, it's a wonderful, it's to a thousand generations to those that love the Lord. And so now sin, that's, in Noah's day, there was so much sin in the nation, God's going to destroy everything on the earth. And so Noah tells Noah to build an ark. And I'm just, I'm getting through here to tell you. So Noah, in, in se chapter 7, so Noah builds this ark, and the Lord tells him to go two by two unclean animals, male and female, two by two unclean animals uh, to multiply on the earth after the flood. And he tells them to take seven clean animals, male and female for sacrifice so right here this is the covenant of blood he's telling him to take these clean animals on there also male and female and after the flood first of all he sent the um, pigeon out of whoever it was and he never came back they sent out to see if the waters had subsided he never came back so he lived on dead things he sent the dove out and the dove came back because the holy spirit will never stay around dead things. Make sure you're in a live church. Make sure you're not dealing with dead stuff. The Holy Spirit doesn't do it. Flesh is dead. That stuff is, he only, he will not stay around dead. He, he, lit, he goes where the living is, where the, where the presence of the Lord is. So the first thing after this earth was totally, totally wiped out of sin. There was no sin here, which is Adam and uh, Noah and his family. The first thing he did coming off that ark, he made he did a sacrifice. And this is 818. The first thing Noah did on earth after this flood, he built an altar to the Lord and offered the blood sacrifice of the clean animals. See, they had to be clean for the, for to cover sin. To cover they had to be clean blood from clean animals and clean birds. It says after the flood he, it mentions the birds, the fowl. But the clean animals were two by two, male and female, and seven. It had to be number seven, which is perfection in the Bible. It means complete. And he offered up the, and the Lord smelled that sacrifice as a pleasing aroma. Now, when you offer yourself up to him as a sacrifice to be used for him, whatever he calls you to do, the Lord knows I never thought I'd be in a deliverance ministry. 
but I thank God I am. I, 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 I was blessed myself from it. And, and the Lord called me to share what I had learned with, with anybody that would look. Get closer to the mic. Okay, maybe I need to put my earphones back in. Let me put my earphones back in, Mandy. Uh, I cannot hear you. Hold on. I'm putting my earphones back in. Can you hear me? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Somebody tell me. That's much better. Okay, thank you, Lord. I don't know what that... Thank you, Allison, Paid, Amy, Mandy, everybody that said something, Cindy. Um, after that, God said he would never, ever again destroy the earth with a flood. This is 9-9. Nine, nine. He said it's the first time in... Co it was the first time the covenant was applied between God and man and their relationship was when Noah came off that ark and offered up, built an altar and offered up the clean animals to God. And so the earth was clean. There was no sin here at that time. And the covenant was the rainbow. That they, When we see a rainbow, that God would never destroy the earth again with a flood. And, and also, he said, there would always be seed, Time and harvest time, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night, shall not cease. He cleansed the earth with the flood, with the with, with the flood, and then he the sacrifice. The first thing on this earth after that was a blood cut. Was that sacrifice of those clean animals? How did Noah know about the blood sacrifice? It went back to Adam and Eve. When God set the uh, president and established the blood sacrifice for covering for, for their sins. And he knew it, they had to have known about it because uh, Abel knew about it. Noah's sacrifice was so pleasing and it made the covenant with him and his seed. The flood had uh, cleaned the earth from sin and uh, any and all the people couldn't it, it was just cleansed so that was they were starting all over and then you know it kept going only thing done on earth after the flood was the blood the first thing was it was to free from sin from from a blood sacrifice i believe noah remembered adam and eve also i believe he remembered abel's sacrifice and the first and that abel offered the first thing born of his flock it, the most the special thing he offered to Jesus. We have to offer the best thing we have to him, which is our life. Tony, thank you for watching, honey. We, it, this is a picture of us offering our life to him. The, the first thing he offered was his first um, born of his flock. We offer our total life to him. Sacrifice, oh my, we, it's not any way we can get away from this. God is calling us to offer ourselves up to him. And walk with him. The next flood won't be a destruction. It's, it's going to be, the next time this earth is going to be cleansed, it's going to be cleansed by Jesus Christ when his blood cleanses this earth. His blood is the only thing that can cleanse this earth from sin now. And there will be a day that Satan will be totally defeated and Jesus will sit in, in Israel as King of Kings and Lord of Lords here on this earth. John 4, 12. This indeed is the Christ, the Son, uh, the, the Savior of the world. This indeed is the Christ, the Savior of the world. This, so the Lamb of God was to come through Noah. So the next one was Noah. The, and I don't know who we missed in between. So now Noah, Noah's carrying this this bloodline in him that's going to birth the Messiah down the road. Noah lived 367 years past the flood and he was alive 50 years after the birth of Abraham. That's amazing. Now the, now the Redeemer would come through Abraham and his seed. That's so good. A living sacrifice. We are a living, a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to the Lord. That's what God's calling us to be. And no matter what trials you're going through, keep offering yourself up as a living sacrifice and take the blood and go to war. We, we need to be aroma, an incense, a special aroma incense to, of Jesus here on this earth. 
the Lord wants a, a, the whole burnt offering, which is our life. It's everything in us that he, we yield everything to him. We, in our jobs, wherever we are, whatever we're called, whatever we're doing, that he has our life there. You are the, you are the altar for him. You are his tabernacle. You are the one he, we're the ones he dwells in. We say, Lord, consume us with your fire and your spirit. Consume us. Lord God, I thank you. You're on this teaching and, and people are hearing it the way you want them to hear it because you changed my life re studying all this and you changed that young man's life. They left a, a Buddhist priesthood and became a born again believer and loves the Lord. So now we're, we're over at Moses. And then there's a book called Andrew Murray wrote, The Power of the Blood is also awfully good. I've got this information from all over the places, and I gathered it up years ago. I can't even begin to know where I got it, but I see I've written that up there. So God heard the groanings with Moses and remembered his covenant with, with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Egypt was in bondage, and so Moses comes against the plagues to deliver God's people. This is Exodus 12, 12. God commands the Israelites to take a lamb, unblemished, one-year-old, per household, and slay it, and apply the blood to both sides of the doors in the top. You never put anything on the base because you never tread the blood of Jesus, ever. It's on the sides and the doorpost. And he said, this blood will be a sign to you when, when you see it. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. So this is the first Passover that became the Passover. And no plague will befall you or your dwelling place. And I quote that over my family and everybody, all of y'all in this prayer every morning when I do my prayer. That's one of the things I quote. It is written, no plague can ever come nigh our dwelling place. For you have given your angels charge over us to deliver us from all evil, and we are saturated in the blood of Jesus. Our homes are saturated. Our husband, our marriages, our destiny, our will, our emotions, our minds. I saturate everything we can think of. Our finances, our car, everything. Saturate everything in the blood of Jesus daily and put the arm on. I'm just sharing with you what I'm doing, and I'm including y'all in it, all of MGM. Anybody that's ever come home for prayer, anybody that's asked for prayer, anybody that I've even had to ask to leave the ministry, they're uncovered in it also, in Jesus' name. So we're taking the blood and we're saturating everything with it. And we, and we don't do it lightly. He paid a high, high price for us to have this blessing. Uh, he, uh, let's see, Exodus twelve eleven. He tells them, as you leave Egypt, Eat the lamb in haste. This is a, now I've got to make sure I get this out and y'all understand this because I've got it written so close. There was a lamb for every house. It was a perfect lamb without blemish to apply the blood to, uh, this is Old Testament. To, he commanded the Israelites to take the hyssop and apply the blood to the doorpost. Now let me tell you what hyssop. Derek Prince did a real deep study in all the different languages. Remember he's, he was taught at, Oh, he's brilliant. He had so many degrees and all. He said, hyssop is our mouth. It's what we say with our mouth. We applied the blood with our mouth. So when they applied it with hyssop, it's the same. The closest thing to it in any of it is our mouth, our voice. So that's why I'd say, say it out loud. Say everything when you're praying. Say it out loud. The, e the enemy can hear it, and the Holy Spirit anoints it and, and, and hears it, and it goes to action. So it's good to pray out loud. Pray your prayers out loud. So you apply the so they applied the blood. Now this is what's really beautiful. It was it was their deliverance. It was their protection. The blood brought Israel out of Egypt. The blood brought Israel out of Egypt. And it says, he told them to eat the lamb. And so when they ate the lamb, the lamb was inside of them when they left Egypt. It's the same thing with us. When Egypt represents the world. And when we are born again, we've eaten the lamb. We've, had the, we've applied the blood. We've asked for salvation. And that lamb is in us. And, and he's in us as we come out of the world and start walking with Jesus Christ. And at the communion table, our communion table is that. We, we, we eat of his flesh and we drink of his blood. It's the same thing for us. 
So take that communion. Take it at home. Take it at home. Is, there's nowhere it says you can't take communion. Somebody has to give it to you. You're the body. If you're in the body of Christ, you never take it un, un, without repenting ever, because the, you, it can bring judgment. The Bible says, but it also brings healing. So make sure you just repent of all of your sins and take communion. And I buy these um, crackers that are they don't have yeast in them. That, and yeast means it puffs up. But they, they use the matzah bread in the Jewish religion even today. And, and, and I use grape juice, and I take communion. I read 1 Corinthians 11 about communion, and it's good. That's what I want to tell you. When they, left, when they left Egypt, the lamb was in them. Oh, my goodness. And the blood had been applied to their doorpost. The death angel couldn't take them, and, and, and it was for their whole household. The whole home was, that's another thing right there. The whole home was saved. It was, you know, it is the Lord's Passover. It was the per first Passover, and it's the shadow of Calvary. It's Christ, our Passover lamb. He is our Passover lamb, and he's in us when we start, when we take him in. We come out of the world. And the lamb is inside of us to work, work with his blood. And it brings us out of Egypt also, the world. It's the same, it does the same thing for us. And, we, and of course, we, Moses uh, goes down to deliver God's people. I'm back on Moses. I'm still on Moses, really. And the word says, on the way, um, way to Pharaoh, this is verse 24 in Exodus 4, uh, they encamped. And that the Lord met Moses and, and sought to kill him. And I'm thinking, how could that be? And I looked it up and it does say that. Well, what it was, Moses knew about the circumcision, the blood. That was a covenant made in Abraham's time about being circumcised. And it says one of his children had already been circumcised, but he had a wife named, I forget, an Zephyr. And she wasn't a really good person, but her son with him had never been circumcised. So when she hears this, she takes a sharp knife, it says, and she circumcises that flesh off of her son and casts it at Moses' feet and says, I'm sending you, you are a husband of blood to me. She did not realize that it was how powerful God God demand, commanded that covenant to be kept. It couldn't be broken. And Moses had not circumcised his. He had one because it only mentioned this one. And so she circumcised him. And immediately the next thing it says, uh, me, uh, uh, Moses, Moses went to the mountain of God. It, after that happened, after this circumcision took place and all, he left and went to the mountain of God where Aaron met him. And it said Aaron kissed him. He was so happy to see him. God was satisfied when his wife circumcised because the blood covenant. It was made in, during the Abrahamic time. And it has to be, those covenants had to be kept. These covenants with God are real and, and they're eternal covenants. He doesn't go in one day, and that's why Jesus grunts, you're born again. It's an eternal covenant with the God Almighty because of the blood of Jesus. It's, it's his blood. The blood was in, life was in the blood. That blood is over you and in me and over all of you and in you. And, and so this is where the blood is applied. It's applied by faith. Every day, applied by faith. And when you're praying for somebody needs to deliver, just start saying it. It works. It's so powerful. It works. You don't even have to have much faith just... Just start saying it and watch what it does. If anybody would ever say they didn't think Jesus was alive or they wasn't a demon, all you got to do is start saying the blood. And you know, there'll be a reaction quickly. He finished this work at Calvary for us. John 5, 4 says, Jesus said, For you have, have, uh, you have re refused to believe Moses. This is in the New, this is New Testament, John 5, 4 and 5. He said to them, For you refuse to believe Moses. He wrote about me, but you refuse to believe, and you refuse to believe me. You won't believe what he wrote. No wonder you don't believe me. That's in John 5, 4. Jesus said that. In John 1, 45, he says, We have found him. 
of whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote about Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. In Luke 24, 44, Jesus said, Jesus said, Everything must be fulfilled that was written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. He's, he's telling them, you go back and get, you've got to connect the old with the new to ever understand all of this. And they, all those years and years and years, they were prophesying about Jesus coming over and over and over. And, and here he is, and they still don't believe it. And they're still looking for the Messiah. In fact, they, the rabbi just read one of the top rabbis saying it's very soon their Messiah is coming. So something's happening in the spiritual realm. John 3, 14, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so the Son of God must be lifted up. Jesus became, Jesus became the sin for us. There's no, there's no, we apply the blood through faith. And the anointing of the Holy Spirit comes. And once the anointing comes, uh, it, you know, you know. You know, you know. Today in the Jewish culture, and I don't, I don't know. I've got some dear friends that I love. They're in the Jewish community. They, uh, once a year, they take, they, they do the Passover supper. And they hide the matzo bread in the house. And when the head of the house finds it, and he finds it, he sweeps it out because it's sweeping out their sins for a year. And when he does it, when they do that, whoever the head of that, they have an apron on and uh, with unleavened, unleavened bread in it, the matzah. And, and the, it has three pockets, one for Abraham, one for Isaac, and one for Jacob. And the colors of this apron is so uh, amazing. The gold, the blue, the crimson, and the white. The gold is the nature in the church today, God's nature. The blue is the Lord Jesus Christ anointing in the presence of Jesus. The crimson is Christ's sacrifice. And the white is Christ's uh, perfection. He's perfect. He was a perfect man with no sin. It's all in that apron. And they do this. If they, I read that they still do this. And, and they're looking for their Messiah. Now, over in the New Covenant, we are the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. But you can't separate Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, or even Adam, because... Jesus came through that line so we could be where we are today. And we just thank God for all of it, that he chose us to be born today. For some reason, we're in the last days for sure. John saw Jesus in Revelation and he said, in Greek, the word is A-R-N-I-A-S, and it means a pet lamb. John saw him as a pet lamb in Revelation. It's the same word that they used in Egypt. God's pet lamb, the only lamb, the Son of God. It was the same word they used in Egypt about uh, the lambs when they sacrificed them. It, was a, it means, the Greek word is A-R-N-I-A-S, if I wrote it right. Uh, Jesus was the lamb, the only lamb. But that's how precious they were in the Old Covenant. They were pet lambs. They couldn't have any blemish on them. Or they, or they couldn't be the sacrificial lamb to cover their sins. He was born to die as a Passover lamb. Jesus was born. He, knew, he was born to die. And Mary carried him. Mary never knew that God Almighty had made her because Jesus, God became flesh. It became the Word. The Word became flesh. And, and it was Jesus. It says that in John 1. I read that last week to y'all. Jesus and God, God became flesh and, and dwelt among us. The Word. It says in John 1, 1. You can read right there, John. The first chapter, John. He was born to die as a Passover lamb. When the people were coming against him, all they didn't realize he had created them. He had created them to be living at that time. Oh, my goodness. He not only died for a house, he died for the whole world. His, his redemption is still today for anybody that would just say forgive me come into my heart i need your blood to cleanse me and your spirit to fill me and the only way this world will ever be cleansed again only way can be be through his blood it's everlasting jesus said any man that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood i abide in him and he is in me that blood is in you 
It's the blood that brings relationship, intimacy, and fellowship with Father, with Father God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is right here. He's on this word I'm giving you. The Holy Spirit is, is a companion with me, I can tell you, all the time just about. He has to be because I depend on him. My phone rings all day for prayer. And these people calling need help now, not tomorrow. And God is faithful. He's so faithful. And it's a, it's a progression. It's a prog- always a progression uh, with the Lord. We, we go from glory to glory. So, but you don't stop in between. You keep reaching for the next glory. The next thing he wants to do in your life. Wonderful. Abide in Greek means koinonia. It means communion with him. Close fellowship. Presence of God in your life. I'm asking the Lord right now that you're feeling his presence coming towards you, pulling you, filling you, encouraging you, enlightening you. And the Shekinah means to rub by his presence with the substance of him. I'm asking the Lord tonight, Sandra, I see some lot of new names on here, that the Lord is touching you, that he is rubbing you with his presence tonight, that you are communing with him, that you have great fellowship with him. In, in the Lord's Supper is an intimate way to be with him, just you and him. His Supper, he comes. He comes and covers communion when you take communion with him. That was the, that was the table he set for us. Jesus Christ laid aside his garment uh, in glory to be the Lamb of God on the altar, on the cross for you, for me. He can, when you take that in, it, it, your mind cannot fully comprehend. He was in heaven in glory, owns the world and everything in it, created us. That love is so endless that this was planned from the foundation of the world that he would come to redeem us back to him. That kind of love. I'm asking him to give us, splatter us with it, fill us with it, control us with that kind of love. Karen and Amy and Sandra and Sandra and Connie, I see all these new... God, I pray you're being blessed. And you come back next week because I'm going to finish this in the New Testament. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 says, Christ is our Passover. God said, you apply the blood and death angels cannot touch you. Hebrews 9, 14, if the blood of animals could do this, how much more shall the blood of Jesus Christ purge and cleanse? That means cut it out of you. Our conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Listen to this. Hebrews 9, 14. I'm going to tell you a little story real quick. If the blood of animals could do this, how much more shall shall the blood of Jesus Christ purge and cleanse cut out of you, out of your consciousness, from dead works to serve the living God? Now, let me tell you a little story real quick because I'm uh, we're doing okay with time. We, we're going to pray for everybody afterwards. Um I, I was, we lived in Oklahoma. We were watching the University of Oklahoma play football. This is when they were winning all the national championships for several years in a row. And actually, Wynn Walker's dad was the athletic director during that time, but Mandy wasn't married to Wynn then and really didn't know him. She met him later on when, after we moved to Tennessee. Well, we were sitting on the couch, and I remember I was sitting real close to Shelby, had his arm around me, and I'm watching this game with intensity, and I was watching the people in the stadium because I knew a lot of them, knew a whole lot of them. And we would say something. The Holy Spirit audibly said to me, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses your conscience, Linda, from dead works to serve the living God. Make Christian jewelry. He literally said that with an audible voice over the television, blaring with that football game. I sat there for a few minutes. Now, I never had God talk to me like that. He'd said words or words, you know, but I, and I thought that, I, that has to be in the Bible. So I went and found it. And it is. It, it was, it's Hebrews. I just read it to you. No, where, where, where was it? I just, I've lost it. It's Hebrews something. Uh, you can look it up. It's real. It's in the Bible. And so, oh, I know it's right here. Hebrews 9, 14. So I said, I waited a few minutes because I had to think about it. I said, Shelby, the Lord just spoke to me. He said to make Christian jewelry. And I'm thinking, how am I going to find sterling silver? And how would I make jewelry? How can I do this? And, and immediately he says, well, get the yellow pages. And we'll go look and see where they sell sterling silver. And I, and, and I mean, he, he was all in, never questioned it. 
And within a week's time, I was making jewelry. And I sold it all around uh, the Oklahoma campus. And there were crosses and doves, uh, crosses that were beaten with hammers. And they looked old, but it was sterling silver. And I made doves, the dove descending. I, I made all kind of, a lot of crosses, a lot of doves, just Christian jewelry. And I sold it in all those boutiques and stores around the campus in, in, in Norman, Oklahoma. I went on with it, and, and I was selling. It was all sterling silver chains and everything. We ordered, we learned how to order in the bulk and all that. So, and I had four small children home, so it was perfect. I made it right back there in the room off our bedroom. And so, the one night I had a dream to make a piece of jewelry for the bicentennial coming up, so, you know, 200 years, 1976. And it was the Liberty Bell. So I went and looked up the Liberty Bell. Of course, the scripture on it was saying, proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all the inhabitants thereof. So, so my husband and I had two close couple friends. And so we asked them to join us in this. And we formed a company, PTL in, 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 Incorporated, I believe. And we made that Liberty Bell. And B.C. Clark, which is all over the nation, carried that Liberty Bell. We made it in Sterling and in 14 karat gold. We sold that. We sent one to President Ford and his wife Betty, and they sent us a letter back and thanked us for it and told us that they were putting it permanently in the display of the things that were made, especially for the 200th anniversary of this nation. But the amazing thing about it is what was on there, proclaim liberty throughout all the land, which is what I'm doing on this thing right here to all the inhabitants thereof. And I'm proclaiming Jesus Christ, Lord of Lords, Kings of Kings, Savior of the world, the Redeemer, the, the innocent lamb that was slain, that his blood is, is, his life was in the blood and the blood is for us today, cleansing us and saving us and redeeming us back unto him. And it's into 10 foreign countries. There, there's at least one or two or three people in every 10 foreign countries get these messages and trying to get it up in their churches. Okay, now let me go on now. Okay, Aaron, this is, I'm going to talk about Aaron in just a minute. That's all. When Aaron would want to cleanse the people as high priests of their sins, he would take two goats. One was the sin offering for the Lord and one was the scapegoat. And he would take the sin offering, the blood of this, uh, these goats. That's why they say the goat represents sin because right here, this is one of the things Aaron used as high priest. He would sprinkle. He would sprinkle all the things in the um, tabernacle. He would sprinkle all everything with the blood. He would go back and back where the ark was. He would sprinkle everything back there with the blood, and and he would he would sprinkle. He sprinkled all the people with the blood for cleansing. And once he knew the sin was taken care of with the sprinkling of the innocent blood of the goats, then he would take the. Uh, the other goat lay his hands on it and make a decree, and he would, he would proclaim and confess over the goat all iniquities, transgress, transgressions were being put on the head of the goat, and then they'd take that goat away and release it into the wilderness. So that was how, that was how they covered the sins then. They, it's just amazing. There were three million Jews that at one time that they were sprinkling with blood. Every one of them was sprinkled with blood. That's how incredibly it covered them. It didn't take it out of them. See, when Jesus dealt with me, it was inside. And then, I mean, it started in my inside. It's gotten to my brain and everything else now. But my brain was involved in it because it covered everything, that joy and glory. But I'm just telling you, it started inside. Well, there it was outside. Now, Jesus paid the price so it could be inside, and it transformed us from inside out. Where out there, it was just over them. Thank God we're living today. Okay, Jesus was our scapegoat. The blood alone at Calvary. His, his, his life, his blood takes sickness and diseases and bondages from us, his blood, and it cleanses us from all unrighteousness. It purges us. Okay. Jesus Christ was our scapegoat. He was absolutely perfectly perfect, sinless Lamb of God. Who would do that today? Think about that. 
It's this amazing, amazing grace. Why? No wonder they call him the Savior. No wonder. He took all of our sins. He took my sins. Oh, my gosh. When he rolled them out of me, it instantly split second. I was changed into a new person. Romans 5, 9. In him we have redemption through the blood, the forgiveness of sin. Oh, my goodness. I'm almost through. I already told you about the blood being put on the ear, the thumb, and the big toe, and it's, and and the oil over it. And it was and it was to, and the reason for that that's how they covered people then. They it was to that you're hearing when they put the oil. The hearing when the oil went over the blood, they could hear his voice. Their work was anointed, and their walk was cleansed. When when the uh, oil was put over the blood. The blood was for redemption. To cleanse and cleanse and cleanse. And then the anointing opened you up to the, the spirit opens you up to the things of the Lord. And what oil was left, they put on the head. This is anointing. After they did the three, the, the ear, the right ear, the right thumb, and the right big toe. Then they took what was left and poured over the head. We need the oil over our head. Ask God to anoint your brain, to anoint it. You know, I told you last week that I'm praying this over all of us, that God Almighty, through the power of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, sanctifies us, holy, spirit, soul, and body. That's the, the Bible puts the spirit first, the soul, and the body. That soul is your mind, will, and emotion. We're praying, I'm praying for all of us, starting with me. I'm crying this every every time I pray, God sanctifies. Sanctify all of us, our, our, I say, mind, soul, and body. But is what it says is spirit, soul, and body. So I say, I always say sanctify my spirit too. I, you know, I say that. But the, when I get to the soul, I say the mind, the will, and the emotion sanctifies, Lord. We can't sanctify. So we're crying out to you. We need you. We need our brain anointed. I'm, I, we really do. So we see what he sees and we ears anointed. So we hear what he hears. We can hear him. Our minds have to be anointed. Is what I read. Rest of the oil was to anoint our brains and minds. It's a picture of salvation. The total redemption. In redemption, the total price was paid for every part of us. Every part of us. So, uh, Job, and I'm finishing here, and it's quick. Job offered blood, every a blood sacrifice every morning according to the number of his children. He had seven sons and three daughters. He called them by name, it says, in case they had sinned. So this is where, uh, and it said Satan couldn't touch that, couldn't touch those children because of his prayer. The protection for the children, even though they were living in sin, his, his children were not, some of them were really messed up. They were all protected because of that. He offered a blood sacrifice. Jesus, so we can do it for our children. We can do that for our children, whether they're walking with the Lord or not. Bind the blood of Jesus in them. Bind the Holy Spirit on them. Ask Jesus to bind the Holy Spirit into them to do a work and break down all those things that are the doubt and unbelief and all this stuff that's going on in the world today that's drawing out these young people away. So I think that's... I want to end with that with your children. Some of you have children you're really, really crying to the Lord for. Pray they're sanctified. Pray they're saved. Pray God God intervenes and brings them to a realization who he is. Pray, just bind the word into them. I'm doing a lot of binding the word. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. What, and then loose all the things that's got them hung up and bound up. And yourself. He gives special grace to any, if there's a believer in the family anywhere, there's a special grace upon the children and and the mate that's not a Christian. And in the end, in Job 3, 3, Job says, I have found a ransom. He has delivered me from the pit. Listen, I can say that. He found me and he delivered me from the pit and the miry clay and he set my feet upon a rock and established my going. Many will see it in, in, in fear, and in fear, many will see it in fear, and the Lord is going to do mighty things, and he'll do that with you too. That is truly that scripture he gave me after I was born again, what I just said. He, he set my feet upon a walk and established my going, and he did. There's only one God, one mediator between God and man. No more innocent anything. Jesus was the, paid the full price for eternity. 
There's only one God, and that's and one mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself a ransom for all. And that's 1 Timothy 2.6. And so next week I'm I'm going to be covering the New Testament blood co covenant and hopefully the Abrahamic covenant. And I pray y'all love that. I pray that it sticks with you. I pray that it changes you the way you think, the way that that apply the blood. Whatever's going, if it's disease, Jesus called them infirmities. It could be. It just starts seeing the blood. It can't hurt. If it's a demon, it has to go. And a lot of it is demon. Cancer is a demon for sure. I've seen too many people delivered. So you bind, yes, you bind the Word of God. You, you bind, anytime you get a scripture that speaks to you, write it down, and when you pray, start binding it into all your loved ones. And anybody you're worried about, pray for them. Bind it. By his stripes, we're healed. You know, bind that into them. Bind the stripes, all that. Now, this is what the Lord gave me before the meeting tonight. So I ask the Lord that, that anyone that's confused like that brilliant man that studied all the philosophies in the Bible and everything and could not find Jesus and wound up being a Buddhist priest, if anybody listens to this in the, in the, in the years to come, because it's on YouTube, it's out in iCloud, so it's, it's, you know, it's out. I ask God Almighty that they hear about this blood covenant and it, it convicts them and while they're even listening to it, Jesus Christ comes into their life and becomes real to them. I just thank God for that. I'm thanking God that he's using these, these little teachings. Well, sharing. I'm not teaching sharing because, they, you know, some philosophers and religious people have been through. They'll take this maybe and tear it apart. But I'm just giving you the, the gut of what I've been through and what it, it, this word matches up what I've been through. I always go back to the word for anything. If I can't find it, you know, I'll get away from it. But... The word is true, and it works. It's substance. It's alive. It is alive. Jesus paid the full price, which we'll cover next week, for bondages to go. Anything in our life that's not, we're not where we should be, it's illegal. It's illegal. And we, ha we have the power to get rid of it. He gave us everything to get rid of it. And you may need people to help you. That's what the body of Christ is for. Religion will kill you. That's dead. The Holy Spirit won't touch religion. That's that like a dove. That dove came back to the ark because he wasn't going to go out there with all that dead stuff where the other one did. The, the vulture or whatever it was, the fowl or whatever. It stayed. I think it was a vulture. And it stayed. But that dove wouldn't. So if you're in a dead church, you, you, you're a dead church, you better run. You better run for your life and get where there's life or with what's going on in the world today. You won't make it. You will wind up, you will not make it because the devil is a roaring lion seeking anybody he can devour. And we know we, you've got to have the, the armor of God. You've got Ephesians 6, get in there and learn the armor. Learn God says you do everything. And after you've done everything, you keep standing. That means keep praying because God answers prayer. And then Luke 10 talks about casting out spirits and you don't joy and that you joy that your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. But I, the, that is one of the most glorious free gifts anybody could ever give anybody, that you can be set free from torment. You can be set free from fear. You can be set free from jealousy. You can be set free from witchcraft where all these kids are getting in. You can be set free from generational curses. You can be set free from sins that you were involved in before you came to the Lord and they've left a... a, a a bondage on you you can this is what this is all about this is we and it cuts it out of you it purges it purges means to get rid of it just purges it out as if it had never been there and he restores your soul it says david said he restores your soul which is your mind your will and emotions and that's what the blood of jesus christ and the word of god will do for you through the power of the holy spirit in Jesus' name. I'm praying everybody gets a hold of this. And you can pray for yourself. I've prayed. The Lord's delivered me many things just saying the blood. Or, and then, and if I kind of get stuck, I start praising. And then I'll go back to the blood till I feel the release. Now, the hard things you need help. You don't have to know what it is. If you just know something's not right, just say, I bind this and I command it to go in the name of Jesus Christ. And I apply the blood and just go, go and I, and once you, this is a key, once you get rid of, because these things are cycle, you command it to never come back. That Jesus did that. He said, you can never come back. 
closed every door, bind it back to its master, and, and nothing, no other demon can take his place. You feel, you ask God Almighty to fill that area with his, with his spirit of God and the word of God. And so that you, the enemy cannot ever cycle and come back and mess you up. If you do that, it cannot come back. You plead the blood. Uh, hi, sweet Logan. Thank you, honey. And thank you for helping me with this all. He helped me with getting this set up. Now, look how good it's gone tonight. Honest to goodness, he's been right. And Mandy helped me too. Whitney helped me. I've, I mean, this family has re really been helping me. And thank you, God, that this phone has worked wonderful tonight. And Logan's getting me a, a speaker. So I won't have to wear these earphones much longer. He didn't get a chance to do it this week. But he's getting me a speaker to go here. And I just thank him for all of his work and, and how he came over here and worked with me because I'm very slow learning on all of this. I do, you don't know the amazing, the amazing miracle of me even coming on here and doing this. It's like a miracle. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Jesus. Don't forget that um, on, on Facebook, on, under my story, at least twice a week, I put scripture and a prayer for you and your family on there. And I include my family in it. And every, if you read that, or say out loud, I agree with everybody that reads this because I put in this for everybody that reads it. And all this agreement, we're see, we have to see changes. There has to be mighty changes going on with us doing this. And there's usually, there's usually about 100 people that, that click in. And I don't know if everybody clicks in, but usually it's 100. I see the names. They give me their names. So it's wonderful to know who's kind of following it. And this week, I think I only got to do it one time. And sometimes I'll put... Like, um, I put that prayer that I pray for the president when everybody's saying, putting curses on him to die and they want all that. Uh, I put that on my story one day this week. So I didn't get the scripture in there in the prayer that I like to, but I will be doing that this coming week. So don't forget to follow that if you want to be part of that prayer group. And hopefully someday we'll be back in into the hotel where we can have a meeting every now and then so we can really see each other and hug each other. I miss putting, I miss hugging people. Um, and actually, I'm, I've asked the Lord, I'm going to, I hug everybody that's been on this tonight. And I ask the Lord to release that anointing that people feel when I hug them. That it's going into every one of you right now. That you feel the presence of Jesus. Every one of you. I ask God to let you feel the presence of Jesus as I squeeze you in the spirit realm. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Lord, let your spirit go and heal, deliver set free, whatever they need, God, give it to them now in Jesus' name. Let your spirit fall on them. Fill them. Enlighten. Illuminate. Oh, God, by your spirit in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. So here's what the Lord gave me before I came on. And, and the, these are happening. This is happening. These are happening because he gave them to me, literally his voice. I asked him what, what he wanted to give me before the meeting, and I'm putting it on. I'm going to say it now, and it, a lot of, some of these may be years from now when they listen to this. I don't know. Only the Lord knows. There's a Susie that needs a foot healed, and the Lord says that he's healing your foot, Susie. Thank you, Logan, for saying it's a great teaching. Thank you, honey, and all those have been thanking me for that. Oh, that encourages me to keep doing this, you know. Because I, I, I have to see, you know, I've got to know it's changing lives. I don't fool with it because it's too much to do. Someone with jaundice is being healed. Jaundice. I think somebody last week got healed of that too. That Usually your liver or a baby. If somebody has problems with their health or with something, and the Lord said to tell you it's lack of sleep. It's not a problem. It's a lack of sleep. We'll correct that. Jerry with shingles, Lord Jesus is healing a jury with shingles, and a Lila is in depression, and it's because you're carrying bitterness, and you have, to, you have to ask Jesus to help you forgive, that he can give you the grace to forgive whoever you're holding bitterness towards, because it will really block your, it will block you feeling the presence of the Lord. He won't leave you, but you won't, you won't have the fellowship that you won't, won't like you want. So Lila, it's Lila, L-I-L-A. Bitterness, let it go, honey. We're praying you're letting it go now. We 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 take it. We take that bitterness for you, and we cast it back to the pits in Jesus' name and heal your heart. And there's a barren. No, there's a son coming home, barren. I don't know if the father's name's barren or the son's name's barren. 
and someone's suffering with hiccups that's leaving you right this minute. As soon as you hear this, those hiccups are gone. Those muscles are relaxing, the brain's relaxing, and you're healed. Uh, this is very interesting. I haven't had him do this. There's a Jesse in Francisco. He said, to tell you you're on the right track is something about buyers, but there's some danger to pray and to seek him for wisdom and be careful. But you're on the right track. So there's something in there, though, you need to be very careful about. You can get straight before you ever sign any papers. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, honey. Um, a jaw is being healed. A uh, Leslie, okay. There's two or three with two. I said tooth that's being healed. And there's some kind of contamination. I don't know if it's, it's food or if it's house or what. He said, God says to tell that person that's been dealing with contamination, he's removing all the contamination. When you hear this, he's working to remove all contamination, whatever that is. And Deborah, with the heart, you, your heart's being healed. And let's see, what else? And someone's had trouble with lying. And the Lord is delivering you from a lie. And that's a spirit, a lying spirit tonight. Uh, we command it to go and never come back. We command that to go. It was probably born in you, hand down on you or whatever. Something happened as a child that put you, took you in that area in that way. So we thank God that, that you are delivered and free and it can never come back. The doors are closed and you're healed at the place where that came in in Jesus' name. Now, I'm gonna, we're going to pray and I'm going to ask the Lord uh, to show me any healings. If, if not, I know there's been he, people asking for different things and Linda Jackson's been writing them down and she, may, she can go on even and put them on the prayer line we're on our prayer, to our prayer team. But y'all, you will be prayed for and you expect your miracles, expect them. In Jesus' name. Um, I'm so thankful God fixed this phone. I, I am, I can't tell you how, I wanted to cry last week. But do you know, I just looked, there was 360 something people. There was a 50 something more that had heard it by the next morning and now it's 350. And I did have George, the tech, our tech person, slice, slice it or splice it or whatever you call it. He did it in the middle of the week, but I don't know which, because there's so many on there, I don't know which ones. So I, that's the one that'll be on YouTube, the one he worked on. He couldn't fix it, but he he, he took out a lot of that that was broken, because that was a wonderful, that teaching is so good for all of us that we, yes, I see Dorothy. We're praying for Dorothy's total, total re, uh, creative miracles. We're praying for Dorothy, a, a little Down syndrome, beautiful child for creative miracles in Dorothy to start tonight in Jesus' name. Tonight, thank you, Karen and Morgan. It's wonderful tonight. Thank you. Honey, y'all come back and tell people to come next week because we're going to go and learn what the blood, what we, have, what we haven't known or been taught, the power of the blood to get everything illegal out of our lives. It's so powerful. It's a wonderful teaching. And and I learned again, just going through here, things spoke to me again, especially about how much Jesus loves each one of us individually. It doesn't matter what we've done. It doesn't matter what we've done. As long as we've asked him to come into our hearts to forgive us of our sins, that's all because he's a holy God and all he, he's paid the price. So it's free. That's why it's hard. I had a hard time. It's free. Just ask him to come in and forgive you. And if you repent, he's going to come in and you will feel him. You'll feel his spirit. And then he starts working from your spirit out to, to make you whole. But, and it's the blood you've got to know about to apply and use while he's doing that. So we, let's pray. And if you want to say something, I'm going to keep my eyes open while I pray. It, but I might have to close them to hear from the Lord because I don't like, you know. We ask the Lord if there's some healings he wants to do. Thank you, Will. Awesome word. Thank you. If there's something he wants to do, he gives he gives um, gives me the gives me the word because uh, I don't just say something; I have to hear it from the Lord. Angina's being healed. Oh, jeez! Somebody said we command Angina to leave you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for that miracle, Angina. As you receive, I need you to you need to let me know because we're trying to put these testimonies on the web. It's helping people know that they can get the same thing if they need it incoherent someone is so upset they're incoherent so we bind and break the 
the whatever caused that, if it's if it's fear, if it's lost a loved one, whatever's causing someone, or if it's medicine, we break the powers of that and we command them to be normal. Come back to normalcy right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus, that you're touching that person and healing them instantly in Jesus' name. A left eye is being healed, totally being healed. Something to do with the bundle branch is that it's something in your body. The bundle branch is messed up and the Lord's healing a bundle branch inside of you. In the name of Jesus. You can look it up if you want. I don't have time to go into it. It's bundle branch is being healed in Jesus' name. That's, a, that's an incredible miracle. I would never thought. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for creative miracles. Give them new heart. Give them new bundle branch. Give, yes, Lord. Sciatic nerves are being healed. If you're listening, get up and start moving around. Just start thanking Jesus. He's healing. He's putting everything back in alignment, perfect alignment for you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Someone is suffering because of defamation of character. Someone has, has really tried to run you, and we bind that curse. We break that curse off of you. We break the, the evil evil eye that's been sent to, to mess you up. We destroy that, that devil curse that someone's put on you that's caused this. We bind you, Satan. We, we cut her free with the sword of the Spirit. We lose her. It's a lady. Charlotte's the name. We lose you, Charlotte. We command that thing to leave you. We command the, the damage is done. The God Almighty justifies you. You don't even try. The God Almighty is going to justify you. And if, it's, if it's the court, if the courts, the God's going to justify you. You you just start praising Him, praising Him for turning this around. That was an evil eye curse that someone put on you. And so we break it. We close the door. We bind it to the pits. We wash you in the blood of Jesus. We saturate you in the blood of Jesus. Your character and everything. We ask God. To rearrange everything and to, ju to justify you. Because you can't do it yourself. The Lord has to do it. In Jesus' name. Well, you, if you ha whatever you have to do. I mean, if you have to do it for courts, do it. But the Lord's the one that will bring, the, bring it about in the end. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, there's some creative... Miracles happening. Creative miracles. Lord, you know where they are. I thank you for pouring the heaven, open heavens, healing, and even body parts, Lord. New body parts. Just put new body parts in people. New endocrine glands. New immune systems. New hormonal systems. New uh, chromosomes. New genes. God, I thank you for creative miracles everywhere creative miracles y'all all agree god anybody needs creative miracles are getting it right now in jesus name for the glory of god for our joy but you will always get the glory lord thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus something about a limousine i don't know what that is lord but we ask you protect the limousine protect people in the limousine if somebody's locked in and can't get out, I ask you to open the door, supernatural, whatever that is. God, in Jesus' name, we cover it in the blood of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Is there anything else, Lord? Don't let me miss you. Oh, someone's had a brain hemorrhage. So God's going to, a brain hemorrhage, which would be a stroke. It means the brain bled inside. It wasn't a clot. It, it means the, the vascular system bled in the brain. We ask the Lord to, to suck the, the blood out, suck the clot that came from, the, from that, not from the heart, but came from the brain itself. We ask God to clear it up, to give them back all brain, every part of their brain, new brain cells, anything that died, we command to come back to life. And that that person's healed perfectly now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus. Loss of hearing. So we command the hearing to come back. We bind the devil. That's a demon. Deaf and dumb spirit. We bind the deaf spirit. Unless it was now, unless you know, noise or something damaged it. But if you're just going deaf, we bind it. We command your hearing to come back 100%. 
and clo- we close the door to every demon that's being cast out now permanently. In the, and we close those doors and you can never come back in Jesus' name. And we decree healing, perfectly healing, perfect healing in Jesus' name. Tuma, a tuma. Where is it, Lord? In the chest. There's a tuma in the chest. So we bind the tumor up and command it to just come out, just to come out. Lord, pull it out and pull anything connected to it out. If it's cancer, pull the cancer out with it. Send it back so when they look, it's not even going to be there. It'll be totally healed, totally free from that tumor. And any kind of damage is done too, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you. Thank you, Lord. I command that thing to go, 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 go. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Okay, somebody's kind of limping, and their right side is going down lower than their right side when they walk. So that means that right side is shorter or something. Sit in a chair and put your legs out, and God's going to grow. If it's your leg needs to grow, he's going to grow your leg out right now. It's going to grow out. This may be for several people. because And that's something the Lord does anytime I pray for a person for this. But this is the first time he's shown it me this over these videos. Sit down and put your leg out. We command it to grow out to the perfect length of the other one. Right now, all over, everywhere. Anybody has a shorter leg. God, I thank you that you're growing those legs out. Super, and they stay out, and they'll never have any more problems. And there's a lady on here that had lifts in her shoe. She was in one of the meetings, and I saw her name just a few minutes ago, that literally sat down, and her leg grew out. She had to take a lift out to go home, and she's healed. She's perfect and totally healed. Still, this has been two or three years ago. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, I give this all to you. I thank you for the Holy Spirit's work and all these lives and things that weren't called out, Lord, doesn't mean you're not doing them. We've asked for creative miracles in everybody. We're asking total deliverance for healing that anybody's suffering with any kind of pain or malfunction or disease our infirmity or affliction, we bind it. We bind up every plan of Satan everywhere he's working. We bind him up out of your nervous system, your muscular system, your vascular system, your endocrine system, your hormonal system, your um, immune system, out of your digestive system, out of your uh, bone marrow, out of your blood, out of your joints, out of your muscles, tendons, ligaments, back, neck, hip, elbows, ankles, toes, all your joints. We command everything in you to be healed. Everything. We're commanding everything. The arteries, the veins to be cleaned out and soft and flexible and healed. The heart, strong and healthy. The valves, all healthy. The digestive, the rectum, the uh, colon, everything healed, cleansed by the blood, healed and delivered by the blood of Jesus. The uh, kidneys, the bladder, the stents that go between the two, the liver, the pancreas, the gallbladder, the um, whatever else, Lord, I can't, the spleen, the appendix. We command everything in everybody listening to start being healed, healed, healed in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. We bind all the works of Satan to try to ruin people's lives, stop them. We command him to go. All dizziness has to go. All indigestion has to go. All uh, vertigo has to go. All sinus trouble, allergies, we command allergies as a spirit. God told me that years ago when that, when that first girl I prayed for was healed, he called it a spirit. We break the spirit of allergies off of all of us, and we command us uh, everything in the immune system to be healed in Jesus' name. We command our blood to be purified so that as cinephils and all with these allergies are purified, dead, gone in Jesus' name, Jesus' name. Lord, I'm praying for everybody watching that you're healing them. And anybody with a broken heart, that God heals all broken hearts in Jesus' name. That he literally goes in and takes that brokenness and fills it with his love and tenderness and compassion. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, I decree a healing on everybody watching this. And, and deliverances on everybody that's watching this. That there's breakthroughs where you've been working for a breakthrough. I command breakthroughs that the Lord God sends his holy war and angels and starts causing breakthroughs for everybody. Finances, and what, family relationships, 
in every way, God, start doing mending and healing and delivering. We just thank you and praise you, Father God, for your mercy, for your goodness, for your tenderness, for your miraculous move on all of us. In Jesus' name, we apply the blood to everything, Lord. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for your blood that covers us completely, saves us completely, redeems us completely, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for the fill every one of us with the Holy Spirit tonight like never before, with the fire of God, everything to do with you, Lord, everything about you, fill us to overflowing. Overflow us, Lord, with your with you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Now, if anybody wants to say something, say something and I'll talk back to you. I'm through. I think I'm through. I believe I'm through. Yes. Revelation. Yes. Revelation knowledge, Lord. Pour in your revelation, wisdom, knowledge, counsel, understanding. Revelation. Fill us all with the spirit of grace, the spirit of truth, the spirit of holiness, the spirit of life, the spirit of supplication, the spirit of adoption, and the spirit of glory. Fill us, Lord God. We're crying, God, fill us and use us. We we don't want to be filled and dead. We want to be used, used, open doors to use us. Just, it doesn't have to be, you don't, I mean, we're, none of us are looking for anything huge. We're just looking for, to minister wherever you have us to minister. Just show us, guide us, lead us, open our mouth and use us for your kingdom, God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I broke, a, uh, I broke a, on, on a man this week, one of the men I prayed for, I broke a, a spirit of silence. And this man has, a, has had a tremendous anointing from the Lord God Almighty uh, to pray and people are healed. He had wisdom, the words of knowledge, and the devil threw so much stuff at him with finances, with just life. It silenced him. And God broke that off of him this week. It silenced him. He, he came out of all of that because he, he was too busy. To, he, had to do, he, had to, he had to make a living. And so the Lord delivered him from a, it was called a silent spirit. And it, and it wasn't like he took his voice or anything. He did take his voice because he got him. He messed. He hid everything about him and his his family, and it just took the life out. And in the meantime, he almost died. I think once or twice because the devil even did. It was a, a incredible. He's coming back, and yes, and when he does, people will hear about him again because the enemy really tried to destroy him. That's why we you you. If, if we could have gotten that early on, but we didn't, you know, I didn't get that, and they didn't get it, so we got it. It was called a silent spirit, and two men this week have been delivered from that. Two men that God was using them and putting them out there, and everything in their life went into chaos. It took them completely out, so they didn't, they didn't hardly have time to sleep trying to keep up with all everything going on. So th this deliverance ministry is huge, y'all. It's huge for all of us. Because you don't know, you know, we don't know. All I know is put the arm on every day, plead the blood, command Satan not to come near you, and ask for the warring angels to do battle for you too. And everything with the blood of Jesus. Saturate everything with the blood of Jesus. And this word, the word is so powerful to correct us and let us know where we need to kind of move in another direction. Yes, Amy, I, we are praying. God, everybody on, watching this that has a desire to serve you, no matter how small it is. I know I'm a servant. That's what I know my call is, to be a servant to the body of Christ. I'm a servant. So and some people out on the aisle front, you know, out here in front and with millions of people following them. But no matter how big or how small, it's what God has for you to do. And it's not small in his eyes. It's as big as those doing the million. You just So I'm asking God right now, everybody, Debbie and all of us, that God Almighty, okay, there's a pastor that's, that's fighting cancer, that his bone scan will be clear of cancer on Tuesday. Let's all agree. Pastor Buster, bone scan, that has, we command the cancer to come out of his bones, to come out of his blood, to come out of his body. We bind that devil up, that demon of cancer up, and we come, ask the Lord to wash it out with the blood of Jesus right now as all of us are agreeing that, that, that 
I, I just ask God to wash it out of him right now. The name We bind cancer. We bind the destruction of cancer. We command his bones to be healed, his blood to be healed, his whole body to be healed. We bind into him. It is written by the stripes of Jesus Christ. He is healed. That it is written that the Lord sent in his word and is healing him and delivering him from all destruction. I pray this over everybody. That you are the Lord his God that healeth him and healeth her, whoever it is, in Jesus' name. God, we're thanking you that the healing is taking place now. Anybody with cancer, especially this pastor, because in any other, anybody else with cancer, we're commanding it to clean, that they have a clean bill of health. We bind into them a clean bill of health in the name of Jesus through the power of his blood. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jehai David. Dave, I'm glad you're on here, honey. Oh, we speak life into him. We say it is written he will not die. He will live to proclaim the glories of the Lord. It is written that no weapon formed against any of us can prosper. Any of us. Anybody with cancer. It can't prosper. It has to die. Drop and die and be gone in Jesus' name. In Jesus' holy name. We also pray for everybody that's saying addictions. That God does such a miraculous turn around that nobody can believe it they'll they'll be in awe we ask god to do this for anybody in addiction anybody listening to the family members that have addictions they're all kind of addictions we break the powers of addictions of that devil of addiction we break it out of the wheel out of the emotions if the wheels are uh, in bondage you know if the wheel needs to be set free we set the wheel free the mind free the emotions free they're everything, they're everything about them free in Jesus' name so they can w walk away. In, in, and the Word of God says that it is written, if two or three of us agree on anything, it will be done. And so everything, we just thank you, Lord, that your Word, it's the same thing you said to Satan, it is written, we're saying to these devils, you're going because it is written. I've quoted the word of God to you and you're going. You have to go. You have to bow to the word in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name. And we ask the Lord to rescue David wherever he is. That the Lord rescues him. That sends holy angels and rescues him and brings him home. In Jesus' name. And Steve. And all these names coming on here, Lord. We just thank you that you're doing a rescue tonight. Of broken hearts. Going back and healing Whatever caused this to happen to start with, God, go there and just start, just start erasing it out of them, erasing it like it never happened, Lord, with your blood. The blood of Jesus cleanses, cleanses, purges. It is written, your blood purges, Lord. We purge them with your blood, their minds, their wills, their emotions, everything about them, their brain, the chemistry in their body, everything, that it, that it doesn't crave anything and that is purged, Lord. It is written they are purged that you set the captives free. It is written you bring those out of, out of prison. It is written you, that, you del that you are God of deliverance, that you set us free from the terrible one, it says. And even our children. It's the devil himself. You, that's scripture. I forget where it is, but it says he, he sets us free from the terrible one. God, we thank you that you're a God of deliverance, God of mercy, God of love, God of healing, God of restoration. Thank you, Jesus, that every prayer that's prayed here tonight, God, that you're moving in right now by your spirit and changing circumstances now in the name of now, Lord, that you're setting captives free. It is written chains are being broken. Yes, in Jesus name. And wherever uh, people are being uh, where there's jealousy against people. We command the jealousy to subside, the evil of that to go, and it cannot affect any of our lives ever again in Jesus' name. Um, I see where somebody's uh, captives release chains off of a son. God, we're it is written that you, are, that the blood of Jesus Christ delivers him, delivers him from dead works to serve the living God. That's uh, we in the name of Jesus. We command him free in Jesus' name. Uh, the Houston's. Okay, that the Houstons are restored, that the wife comes back to God and comes home in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask you to send, that you do send your angels to deliver us from all destruction. That's, that's your word. So we ask, Lord, that you, in the name of Jesus, send holy angels, send people around them to bring, to bring, to bring them back to their right mind and thinking, and, and that you restore this marriage. All any marriages on here, we ask God to totally restore them. That they're better than they've ever been, better than they've ever been. She's coming home. 
and she's coming back to God, that you get a hold of her, Lord. Lasso her and pull her back in Jesus' name. That all hope, that yes, that hope is restored, pain is gone, and freedom takes over in Jesus' name. Yes, in Jesus' name. And the, the ones that are carrying heavy burdens for their children, we ask the Lord night to start breaking through those walls that have been so hard. We ask God to send warring angels, send, and, and send the Holy Spirit, Jesus, just send, send your power to break down these walls that are keeping people separated so they can't get their prayers answered. We command them to all separate, like separate, to go, separate, and go back where you came from in Jesus' name. We yes, we uh, we do pray. We pray for the COVID patients and virus to be gone out of this nation in Jesus' name. And for those that are sick, there's so many sick, and it's increased in South Carolina really bad. So we command it to die, just to die. Nothing can take its place in Jesus' name. Yes, Jennifer says, give them encounters. Yes, it, that that changes your life, Lord Jesus. Every every person that needs you, let them encounter you because you are life. And when they encounter you, it changes everything. That life goes on to them, and that life changes things. So, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for that. You put light in our children. Save all of our children. Being used as sex slaves or murdered by abortions. Or, oh, God, cleanse America. Cleanse our land, Lord, from these sins of iniquities, Lord. And Jesus, I'm asking, the Lord, that the light is put on the uh, sex slaves, that every one of them is uncovered. That everyone, anybody that's been stolen, any child, we're saying none, not any of our family can ever be stolen by the devil, ever. Y'all all agree, ever. Not any of our children ever can ever be seen or stolen by any, anybody. That they are hidden behind the blood, they're hidden behind holy angels, that no, no devil can see them in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And we bind sugar diabetes off of Yvonne, and we command her to be healed. Oh, my goodness. And that she's not going to have to have her toe empty. We command blood flowing back into that toe. We command the veins to open up into that toe, circulation to open up in that toe, nerves to open up in that toe. God asks you to make a new vein. Just make a new one. Now, now, create a miracle and get blood circulating back in her toe, Lord, that she never has to have it amputated. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, that it is written by your stripes, she is healed. It is written by your stripes, she is healed. And that we're all hidden, that all of our children, and we are all hidden behind the blood and in the blood. They can't see us. Every dark place be re revealed. Every dark place, yes, Jennifer, er, everybody's agreeing. As y'all put this up, every dark place is being uncovered and revealed to the light and, and taken care of and, and delivered in Jesus' name. Families are protected, Lord, that all the families are protected in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for, we, I thank you for the people that I pray for this week, that everyone I'm receiving, their healing, their miracles, their deliverances, and they're being set free in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And that tomorrow will be a new day for all of us, that we'll feel a freshness of the Spirit in our lives, in Jesus' name. The, there's a car wreck and, and there were severe injuries. Uh, uh, Kenzie, we command her, him to, I don't know if it's a girl or boy. In the name of Jesus, it is written, where two of us agree, it's touching anything. We ask for complete healing of everybody that was injured in those car in that car wreck. Right now, complete healing, Lord. We thank you that he, they will live and not die. It is written, they will live and not die to proclaim your glory and your goodness, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for that. We thank you for your love, your goodness, your word, that you that you honor your word, and we plead. It's, it's a girl, okay, we thank you, Lord, that Kins is being healed right now. That everything that's, uh, that needs to be uncovered, be uncovered with the light. Yes, in Jesus' name, we just pray that. Thank you, God. We pray it again, God. You must want... We ask you to do that. It's uncovered. The light of the Holy Spirit's uncovering it. And the right people see it and correct it in Jesus' name. And we reclaim the glory. Uh, someone, we reclaim, uh, yes, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we reclaim the glory for all of us that it becomes so real and so personal and so life-giving to all of us in Jesus' name. 
that America's healed, that this land, the land we live in, the land you gave us to be born in, is cleansed by the blood, cleansed by the blood and by your word, and that you become Lord again in America. Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. All broken bones to be healed. Supernaturally, Lord, it is written, you do created supernatural miracles. So we thank you for healing those bones. My nose is itching. I'll, I'm sorry, my nose is itching. Let the blind see, the deaf ears hear, the sick, the maimed, the lame. I've even been asking, Lord, to do created miracles with arms and legs and eyes and everything. We pray. Okay, we this family... A, a cheek family. See, when I call names out, there's thousands of everybody with these names, so you never know who anybody is. The cheek family, that Satan takes his hands off of them and all related to them. We bind any kind of curse, family curse, generational curse, evil curse. We break it off. Of, we bind up any kind of witchcraft that could be touching them, causing problems. And we ask you, Lord, for deliverance, and for a breakthrough tonight, in Jesus' name, let the blind see. Yes, Tracy, I agree with that. The, a spiritually blind and physically blind, in Jesus' name. Fresh fire from God, Karen. Yes, fresh fire. Fall on us, God. Fall on us. Fresh fire. Fresh fire, oh God. Quicken us. Illuminate us. Quicken us, oh God, by your Spirit, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, they're they're praying for they're in Washington. They're praying for our country, and they're praying at the national ball in Jesus' name. I ask God to anoint you with great anointing to bring holy angels in there to warfare up there for us and covering in the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for America. Thank you for this great land you've given us, and that we haven't been faithful to. To watch over it like we, good, yes. Forgive us and give us another chance, Lord. We pour oil all over, all over us, all over this nation, the oil of the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Uh, nerves and brain cancer, Kenny brain cancer. Father, in Jesus' name, we command brain cancer to go. I pray for two people today with brain cancer. We command all brain cancer to go. It is written by your stripes. What's his, uh, Kenny is healed. In the name of Jesus, we command cancer to come out of his. We break the powers of that. Every cell of it has to come out of him. We strip it out in the name of Jesus. We bind it back to the pit. It is written, by your stripes, Kenny is healed. It is written, you send your word and heal him and deliver him from all destruction. God, we thank you for the miraculous healing here. For Kenny and Kenzie, both in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Uh, we pray for people that can't sleep. That Cindy, there's been several other ones here. That Cindy can sleep. Insomnia, insomnia has to go. It has to go in the I Lord, when 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 they lay their head down on their pillow tonight, they immediately go to sleep and sleep all night. I ask you to put them in like a Holy Spirit tranquilized sleep, and they sleep all night and wake up very refreshed in the morning and raise their hands and thank you for letting them sleep tonight. And let this go on every night, Lord. Just heal whatever's causing it. Release them from that trigger that's causing this and close it, Lord, and, and totally restore them so they can sleep good in Jesus' name. And the right hip needs to be healed. Somebody's right hip needs to be healed. So we command the right hip to be healed now and go into alignment in Jesus' name. Michelle, Brenda, Jasmine, Serena against the demonic spirits tormenting from their sister and aunt. Okay, we, we come against demonic spirits that are tormenting several people here that's coming from a sister and aunt. We break the powers of it. We bind it up. We, we dismantle it. We bind up the network of it, all of the demons in it, and we pull, the, pull them down and pull them out and bind them up and cast them to the pits. In the, and we close every door, God, in Jesus' name. We ask God Almighty that, that the witchcraft is bound back to the pits of hell. The evil is bound back to the pits of hell permanently. And this family is released through the power of the blood of Jesus in the name of Jesus. We do pray peace and restoration on every life in here. Those, of, those that have been praying for a long time for answers, I'm asking God tonight's the night that he's turning 
turning the page for that, turning the page. And anybody that we're praying for this mark has a black mark on them from, from a spirit or from a demonic spirit or your name's written in the satanic black book. We command the black books to be burned up and we command the mark to be burned up and we put the mark of, the, of Jesus Christ across on them and the blood and salvation and we command them to be restored and healed in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And everything the devil's taken from them because of that is now canceled forever, permanently. And we release the good things of the Lord on them in the mighty name of Jesus. 1 Peter 5.10, God himself will restore you. We bind that on everybody that needs to be restored. And Abby's parents' healing and provision, that they're getting healing and God's provide, opening doors for them to be blessed. In Jesus' name. Yes, yes. And some people are receiving these. So we thank you, Lord, that this is happening in Jesus' name in lives. And it's real, tangible things are happening. God, not, not uh, it didn't happen again. God, I am thanking you that it do, it's happening tonight. I am asking you to anoint everything that is happening tonight. By tomorrow, there's changes everywhere. In Jesus' name. Changes, it's visible changes that you can tangibly put your hand and mind on in Jesus' name, that we're all restored in Jesus' name. Let God let you arise and let our enemies be scattered. It is written, let our enemies be scattered, Lord, and you arise in our lives and situations and restoring us in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for every body that put a name or not a name out here for a prayer to be answered. Jesus, in, Father, in the name of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, I release all of this to you. And I thank you that the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name will confirm these prayers with signs, miracles, and, answering, and answers. We bind this into all the lives. We bind in this into every life. In your name, Lord Jesus, because of Calvary, because of the cross, because of your blood covering, the blood that was sent to deliver us, we decree it that it is written that this is that when you said it is finished that tonight these things are taking place tonight lord in the name of jesus father god i give you all glory i give you all praise we will not ever touch it it is yours but we thank you for the miraculous and that that we are willing to say our testimony because of the blood of jesus christ I am delivered, I've been delivered from uh, melanoma because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I have been delivered from melanoma. I will never have it again in Jesus' name because of the blood. I've been delivered from so many. I've been, the Lord's healed my lungs from where it was. He, and I'm saying, my, I will never have lung trouble again like that, ever again in Jesus' name. Because of the blood covering, the covenant I have with Jesus through the blood. Thank you, Lord. I'm praying this for all of you, whatever you, Whatever you need, decree it. Decree it because of the blood covenant. I, I am healed in, in Jesus' name. And just quote scripture. Just say that. That's what this whole teaching was about tonight. These things are illegal. And we haven't, the church, we haven't been taught. Church hasn't been taught. We've got people, you know, I mean, it's just sad. It's just a very sad state. The deliverance ministry, Jesus spent one-third of his ministry in the deliverance ministry, and, and, the, and millions of Christians will not pick it up. And because of it, millions are suffering, and a lot of them have died because they didn't know they could be delivered from whatever was trying to destroy them. It's a sad thing, but it's a gift that's given to us freely from Jesus. Jesus. Even mental illness... He healed that man with mental illness just by telling the devils to go. It is written, he's given us sound minds. Jesus has given us sound minds. So we bind all mental illness off of everybody. We bind any kind of spirits of bipolar, depression. Uh, what's some other ones? There's one I was delivered from so long ago, and I wanted to sleep when I got into, when I got overloaded. Um, not schizophrenia, but we bind schizophrenia off of people. Bipolar off of people. Uh, there's another one. I can't think what it was that he delivered me from. God is faithful and good. It is written, God's given all of us a sound mind. God has given, it is written, a sound mind. And God has not given any of us a spirit of fear. Any fear anywhere has to go. 
any anxiety, PTSD has to go. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It is written, God's given us a sound mind. It is written, the peace of God that passes all understanding. I, I, I release it to everybody in Jesus' name. Yes. There's a resounding yes in Jesus. Yes. We, we give it all. We, we say, Lord God, we need you. We're calling on you. We're expecting the glory to fall on us. We're expecting these deliverances. We're expecting these healings. We, we have faith. We believe God. We know that you're doing it. Thank you, Lord. The anxiety is going. The causes of the anxiety has to go too in Jesus' name. Whatever's causing it has to go in Jesus' name. Memories, traumas, whatever it is. Living under stress all the time. Whatever it is, we bind and break it. Father, I thank you it is written that the peace of God that passes all understanding is falling in those places where there's anxiety, fear. We break the spirit of offense, and that is a big one. I did a whole teaching on offense. What it does it is, it's, it's really a big one. We bind and break, in the name of Jesus, a spirit of offense. We command it to go. We command it to go. We break it up. Whoever has it, we ask the Lord to give them the grace to release it. And, and the damage it causes, not only them, but others too. We break the spirit of offense. We pull it up. We bind it up. We cast it out. We pull it out of the emotions. We pull it out of the, uh, out of the mind, out of the unconscious, the subconscious. We pull it out. We pull the roots out. By the roots, we're commanding you to come out. And, the, and never come back. Never come back. We bind the devil that will send somebody else with, with an offense towards you or anybody else in Jesus' name. We bind it, and we close every door, God, and we ask for restoration in that area. That offense has to go in Jesus' name. A suicidal, yes, all suicide is bound back to the pits. It is written, God's given them a sound mind, and the peace of God that passes all understanding is filling them now. They don't, won't even understand what happened. Faith is the key to it all. Yes, and you don't have to have much faith. You just start, and the Lord will help you. We forgive freely, fully, in Jesus' name. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. So the Word, just keep reading the Word. And if You know, one of the fruits of the Spirit is faith, and then there's a the gift of faith. But the Word will, the word will give you faith. You know what I mean? It, just, it is because it's the living Word. So get in the Word. And, and praying and seeing the Lord move, brings a lot of faith to you too having enough faith to pray believe and then when he answers it that builds your faith up because you see it working and and nick just ordained tonight and their family so god we ask you to keep your hand on them keep them in the center of your perfect will saturating them in the blood of jesus for protection all the days of their life in jesus name yes in jesus name hallelujah we praise you lord jesus we repent for any and all unforgiveness. Yes, we do. And we forgive freely. We choose to forgive all who have hurt us in Jesus' name. And we break it. We break the hurt, the pain, the broken heart, and all that is caused. We ask God to do a new work in anybody dealing with this tonight. That's a new work in your life so that it, the mem memories won't bring pain anymore and, and that, that you don't have to cover anything because God has so healed you and delivered you. And giving you, you know, and I just thank God for this in Jesus' name. Thank God. That's a good one. Unforgiveness. You got it. And actually, if you can't, ask for grace. And, it, and then, um, I was thinking, Linda Jackson and I stood in faith. And we said, Lord, we take it for that person. They're not able to be. We're forgiven. We're asking forgiveness. So I forget. I wish I could remember that whole testimony. It was an amazing testimony. And actually, it changed that person's life. They didn't know we were doing it. It changed their life. And whatever it was was totally healed. I forget what it was. They could not forgive. The pain was so bad. But the Lord took care of it when we were willing to step in there. And Linda may remember. Okay, Cindy has a, a friend, Cindy, has a mass in her throat. Bob said Monday. So we asked the Lord to remove the, remove the mass before Monday. We asked God before tomorrow. Remove the mass out of her throat. Remove it, Lord. Just cut it out and take it. So they can't find it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I prayed for a lady who had uh, cancer in several places. And the Lord showed me where it was. I didn't know where it was. But I was, I was praying with her. 
and I saw the Lord take it all out of her. It was cancer in several places. And when they did surgery, and the, it was a surgeon and the oncologist did surgery. And it was supposed to be two or three days she'd get a report from the surgery. And they called them that night. And they talked to her husband and her and said when they opened her up, they had never, in all their years, of 20-something years of peace had been in this, this business, had never seen anything like that because nothing was there. It was all gone. They called him and said, usually they won't tell you that. Usually they won't tell you there's a, a miracle. They'll just say, we need to, there's something there. And we, it may not be as bad as we thought, but we, you know, they go with the whole thing, the whole uh, plan that they have for that. But those doctors said to her, we have never seen anything like this in all the years of our doing surgery and oncology. So we expect the same thing. That happened right over the telephone, me praying over the phone. And the, uh, there's been many people healed of cancer over the phone. That's why I can tell you it's a demon. I see it leave. I can see. I don't always see it leave because there's some people the, I don't see, you know, but, the, but they're healed. So, but if I see it, I know it. You know, you know if you see it. It's kind of nice. I thank the Lord for that gift. When we forgive, it actually heals us and releases the offense. Uh, yes, it does, honey. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Dave. Thank you, Lord. We thank. Did you have a good time at the conference, Dave? Did you? Was it really good? In Jesus' name, he he said he was late coming on because he was at a conference. So that's good. I think he was ministering at a conference. Thank you, Lord. Uh, well, it's getting late. It's five minutes to eleven. Lung cancer. Someone's asking for lung cancer. So, Lord, we lay our hands on the lung, on the brain, on the throat. And it, for these people, and wherever its cancers are, and in, in Jesus' name, God, I ask you for a supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, for it is written by your stripes, these people are healed. And so we bind up these diseases and afflictions. We bind them up in Jesus' name. Father God, in Jesus' name, we bind them up. And we're pleading the blood. And we cast them out of them. We command miracles to come out of this prayer tonight. Absolute miraculous miracles that have to be, they have to say it's a miracle. We command all cancer to go. Go on, go, go back to, bind back to the pits. You can't touch another person. You're bound to the pits forever. Every door is closed to you. Everybody says for cancer healing. And all those that call me for healing of cancer, God, I ask you for miraculous healings. Miraculous. Lord, we thank you for miraculous healings tonight. It is written when we pray and agree and have faith, it's done. So we thank you that we're going to hear the results in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, for all the good things you're doing, that you're filling us with the Spirit and the deliverances are taking place everywhere and all the broken hearts are being healed. Yes, Lord, thank you for that. In Jesus' name, all broken hearts. That causes a lot of pain and also a lot of uh, afflictions in people's bodies when they have a broken heart that's never healed. So we ask God to go take the heart and knit it back together. Just heal the heart, broken hearts. There's a lot of broken hearts. It's through divorces and through just evil things and painful things, losing loved ones. So we ask God to heal every broken heart. In any family that's watching this, or anybody you know that has a broken heart, that God heals those broken hearts now in Jesus' name. Binds up their wounds. That's one of the things in Isaiah, Lord Jesus, you said you do. You heal the broken heart and you bind up their wounds. Tonight you bind into every broken heart that you're healing their broken heart and you're binding it up permanently in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for that. There are a lot of people broken years ago and they still carry the pain we thank you lord yes jennifer said come against the spirit of divorce so we do come against the spirit of divorce the devil comes in to rob steal and kill and jesus said he came that it is written we'd have life and have it abundantly so we're praying life abundant life into everybody and where god put marriages together that no devil's going to break it up if God put them together, no devil's going to break it up in Jesus' name. In Jesus. You, if you're young and you listen to me and you're not married, you make sure God's telling you to marry that person. A lot of people marry 
out of infatuation or for all kind of reasons. And it wasn't God at all. So you don't dare marry unless you know it's who God has for you. You'll know that they have the same, that they love the Lord, that they have the same things that you have about the Lord and all, or do not marry them because then you'll be calling for prayer for divorce. And God, now, and he was never in it to start with because you never ask him to be in it. You've got to ask him to bring that right person to you because it is a covenant. Marriage is a, is a covenant with God. It is a covenant. And the covenants couldn't be broken. I mean, that's why the Lord talks about it. And all and listen, I've, it's all in my family because they, people. They, there are reasons why the covenants are broken, and one of them is, is infidelity, and that's and it's and that's right in the Bible. But I, it's 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 just and God forgives divorce. He forget, but that's not His plan. He wants us to marry who He had for us. And but when you're young, you don't even think about it. No one even tells you to do that. They don't, and so. I'm telling anybody young, so you don't go through pain that a lot of my family members, and really we've gone through with them, is that you pray and ask God to bring that right person to you, and you don't marry a co commit covenant with anybody till you know it's who God has for you to marry. Then it's God's marriage covenant because he's with it. You ask for him, and he's in it. Yes, thank you, honey, for praying for us. Extra blessings. On everyone and prayers for Linda B and Linda J. Thank you, Amy. That's so precious. Well, I just send it back to everybody. Same thing back to everybody. Repair, prepare our kids for their mates. Yes. Right now, you know, I'm praying for praying for my grandchildren and my great grandchildren. And every morning, I'm saying, uh, Lord, I bind any mate ever coming to any of these children's lives unless they're sent from you. And no witchcraft person can ever get any of my children or grandchildren or great-grand. You need to pray that because that's big. And they lure. If they're in witchcraft, they know how to lure with spirits and things. You bind and break that so that never happens to any of, any of your children. Grand we agree that all of our children and grandchildren and great-grand, until Jesus comes, that no evil person can ever, ever get any of our bloodline to marry them. Ever in Jesus' name, that God brings the right person to them, and they won't say yes until they know it's the right person in Jesus' name. Let's see. Let us worship. Yes, is it tomorrow at the Exchange Park? Okay, let us worship. It's here in Charleston tomorrow at the Exchange Park. It's free admission, and I didn't get the time, but you can look it up on 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 the internet. So we thank you, Lord, for all this, for these, for taking care of our children with who they marry. That it's. That you that you're in their marriage, what God has put us uh, together, let no man put us under. That you put them together. Thank you, Alina. You be blessed, honey, and all your children, grandchildren. Cindy, be blessed. Ashley, Parker, be blessed. Meredith, Lindsay, be blessed. Cindy, oh, Alina, Allison, Linda, Joyce. Oh, there's so many. Dave. There's so many people have gone through here. I can't possibly remember everybody, but there, Cindy. We just I think everybody's probably going to bed because it's eleven o'clock. <laughs> That's so good. I came on at eight thirty so we could get off earlier. But anyway, I love this end time because we can pray with each other. I'm going to do this. I'm going to have this every time that at the end we pray with each other. It's Charleston that let us worship from five to seven p.m. tomorrow evening. If you can go, go. Bless his whole group. Yes. Yes, in Jesus' name. Yes, in Jesus' name. That this that whoever needs to see this will see it on on Facebook. Just share it. Y'all all share it. I'll share it when I get off from here when I can, when they let me. And and then you can share it. Or maybe you can I don't know. Margaret teared up when you sent the hug. Oh, thank you, Margaret. I'm a hug again because there's other people on here. Debbie. I just hug y'all. I ask the Lord to fill you with his spirit, that the glory of the Lord. Thank you, Randy, still there. Thank you, New York City. Oh, my goodness. Randy, you be blessed tonight. You have the best week you've ever had in all the things you've been asking for in prayer. We are agreeing they're all coming to fruition this week in Jesus' name. Seen, Brandon, our leading worship. Let's worship. Okay, Seen, F. Uh, this man, I don't know. I know he's famous because I've seen it on Facebook a lot. 
F-E-U-C-H-T and Brandon are leading the worship service tomorrow at Worship Charleston. So there'll be a lot of people out there worshiping the Lord. Thank God for this. I'm wondering why people, some of our local people didn't do that. I bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jennifer. I bless you too and Randy, Allison, Karen. The God that everybody that was on here tonight is receiving some type of breakthrough miracle tonight in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I just hug y'all. I, I, I miss you. I miss y'all. So I see all those hearts. So I praise God's blessings on you. Great favor, great anointing on you. So just come, keeps growing and gets bigger and bigger. And the uh, great favor. Just wrap you in great favor. Everybody listening in Jesus' name. Oh, somebody said, I see all of us in this. I picture all of us in a circle as prayer wars. Yes, we are. We command the devil off of every life, torment every devil, every curse, every uh, that it backfires, that everything backfires evil and goes permanently out back to the pits in Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Cindy. Thank you, Karen. We hug you back. Yes, I receive all those hugs in Jesus' name. The love of God be spread forward in our hearts by the Holy Spirit tonight on this group. Lord, I think that we can pray for each other and pray for all the people that they brought prayer requests in, and we're going to see mighty miracles, moving mountains. Lord, that you are moving mountains in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord God. And... Uh, I see like, and I don't know who this is for or, what, or if it's healing or if it's for the United States. I see like uh, like a cliff and I can see over it and it's all these big rocks and, and dirt and it's all dead. It's so dry and dead it's just falling down in the pits. Uh, I'm watching this. So we ask God to heal whatever that is. If it's a life that that's happened to, we thank God that he's putting refreshing. He's refreshing them tonight with life. If it's the ground that's got a curse on it because of all the iniquities, we ask God to wash the ground in the blood and cleanse our ground, America's ground, in Jesus' name. And that this is healed, where this is so dead and dry that life is springing up right now tonight, springing up where that was, that the life is coming back. Life. In G Listen, y'all agree, this is big, huge. Life is coming up in that ground. Life. There's not going to be rocks and dirt falling off in the cliff. It's life. Whoever this is, we command life to come and protection and glory and re restoration and restoring everything that's been taken from you. Everything that's been taken from you. That the life of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, it is written, will restore everything that's been taken from you. And, and the life is going to fill that place in Jesus' name. There'll be no more of that dead stuff in Jesus' name. Yes, and anyone that doesn't know Jesus will know Jesus after watching this. And people are being born again. And gee, thank God for the souls coming into the kingdom. The word, of, the word of the Lord, Jennifer says, the word of the Lord says live. So who, whatever that land, but whoever that is, if that's a life that feels that way, you are changing tonight. The hard places, the rocks, everything's going. Your heart, everything's going. And God's bringing life back into everything in your body, in mind, soul, spirit, will, everything. And Jesus, on anybody that needs this, in Jesus' name, we live in the fullness. Yes, Cindy. Yes, they come to know Jesus, Karen. Yes, Cindy, new life. Allison, dry bones come to life. The Lord says, this is different. I don't know what this is. I, it's pretty bad. What is so dead, it's so dead and dry that the sand won't even stick together to the rock and they're fall, all fallen over a cliff. We say, we say, halt, dead as you go, and life, yes, we speak life, well, a stony heart to a heart of flesh. Yes, we turn a stony heart to a heart of flesh in Jesus' name. And from the damage, something caused that. Something caused all of that. So we ask God tonight that there's a miraculous intervention, a miraculous restoring, a miraculous visitation from the Holy Spirit of life in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, dry bones come to life. Everywhere anybody hears this, dry bones of a family's come to life, come alive. Hearts, stony hearts of flesh, soft hearts, compassionate hearts, love hearts, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Okay, I'm going to check off from here. And we will get these, these prayer requests out to, to the team.
And if you need something during the week uh, to get to go on the prayer thing, because I send them out as soon as they come in. You send me a text message exactly the way you want it to go out, and I send it out as soon as I get it. As soon as I see it, it goes out. Joyce, I love you, honey, and Linda. Oh, y'all, I love you. I, God's greatest blessings on this whole, fa all these families. Homes, restor total restoration to all of us. That the Lord's restoring us, all of us, back to where we're supposed to be in Jesus' name. Do a quick work, Lord, and get us where you want us in Jesus' name. So good night. The Lord bless you. Everybody sleep good tonight. Be rested when you wake up in the morning. The peace of God be on you when you wake up in the morning. No more dizziness, no more sicknesses. God, we thank you for total restoration because of the blood covenant we decree. We bind in us total health, total peace, total sleep, total goodness of the Lord in Jesus' name. Good night, honey. I'm, I'm waving. and You can't see me, but I'm trying to wave there. Good night. The Lord bless you. And thank God that the phone is good. Thank you, Lord. Number 624, Allison said. So I don't, I'll have to look that up. Through 26. I love you all. You're precious. Audrey, Aubrey, I love you, honey. Good night. The Lord bless. I release the blessings of the Lord over you in Jesus' name. Bye-bye.